fantasy side tonight, the Europa League, this competition, which was the first competition in Europe that Liverpool reached the final of, of uh, under Jurgen Klopp. Back in 2016, they went to Basel in Switzerland, they were beaten by Sevilla. This is the one competition, the only one that Klopp has played as Liverpool manager that he hasn't won. And in these final few months of his tenure, can Liverpool complete the full set? Sparta, who've got a very good home record in Europe, unbeaten in the last seven home games in UEFA competition as we get underway. Sparta in maroon shirts, white shorts, black socks. Liverpool in the change kit, their green and white quadrants. Then they've got black shorts and white socks. Konate's in possession. Jurgen Klopp naming a strong team tonight as he begins to get many of his regulars back. Liverpool who have weathered the storm of having so many first-choice players unavailable. I think if you had said just a few months ago that Liverpool would have to go without Alisson and Trent Alexander-Arnold and Mo Salah and Diogo Jota and do it without all of them for a long period of time, I think we would have predicted their season would collapse. It's been remarkable how they've kept it going. And they've got the trophies, a trophy in the cabinet already, and on top of that, the top of the league, so, you know, they've done phenomenally well to do this, um, and I think Jurgen Klopp has been a brilliant manager for Liverpool. If they do go on and win the league this season, by a distance, I think that's his best, definitely his best season, because he's what he's had to deal with. A bit of Vindalish, the goalkeeper for Sparta, he bowls it out low to Asker Sorensen, another Dane. There's a, there's a bit of the Brentford about uh, Sparta Prague, because they've got a Danish coach, they've got several Danish players in the squad, there is that Danish influence. Endo's won the ball for Liverpool here, gives it to Darwin Nunes, goalkeeper's in trouble, Gakpo must score, cleared away off the line by Krejci, big chance for Liverpool, inside the opening 90 seconds, and a defensive mistake has almost gifted Liverpool the lead. It was Jurgen Klopp there, because you think you're quite frustrated about that, he seems quite sanguine down there, but what a brilliant start that always was for Liverpool, you talk it within the first two minutes, I was going to see how silence the crowd. Actually, that's not likely to happen, but it certainly would have calmed everybody in Liverpool's green and white down. Darwin Nunez tried to go around the goalkeeper, sort of stumbled as he twisted to shoot, but it nearly fell into the path of Cody Gakpo. Krejci was on hand to clear away for Sparta Prague. Sparta nil, Liverpool nil. This is the Europa League. We're live this evening in Prague. The Letna Stadium will keep you up to date with the progressions later on of Aston Villa, Brighton, who are away in Roma, Villa away in Ajax, Rangers in action in Portugal against Benfica, and West Ham are in Germany playing against Freiburg. Busy night of Europa League and Europa Conference League. And a throw in for Liverpool here, left full back position for Andy Robertson, the Scottish left back, who's making his Europa League debut tonight. He's never played in this competition before. Well, that's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? But then again, he has spent a lot of time in the Champions League, so I suppose that's not a bad thing. <laughs> but uh, it's, again, another player, it's just great to have him back. Not only if you're a Scottish, so yeah. a Scot as well. And you know, Presido is an Ecuadorian right wing back slash winger on the right hand side. He was sent off on Sunday in the Prague derby against Slavia. He runs out of room down the right hand side. It goes out for another throw in to Liverpool and to Robertson once again. Liverpool with Queefing Kelleher in goal, Joe Gomez at right back, Gerald Kwanzaa and Ibrahim Kanate, the two central defenders, Robertson who turns 30 on Monday as the left back, Elliot Endo and McAllister in midfield. There's a foul on Luis Diaz, it's going to be a free kick to Liverpool. Diaz with Darwin Nunez and Cody Gakpo joining him as part of the front three. For the home side, Vindal the goalkeeeper, Sorensen, Vitik and Krejci the captain are three central defenders. Uh, Presedo and Zeleni are the wing backs, Solbakken and Karinin, a Norwegian and a Finn in the middle of the midfield with Birmancevic, Kukta and Lukas Hraslin, Hraslin the Slovakian who's been Sparta's top scorer this season. Uh, between club and country he has scored 16 goals this campaign, he's the main man that Liverpool needs to keep an eye out for tonight. Endo drops in between the two central defenders, plays it into Alexis McAllister, long sleeves and the gloves tonight and what is a cold evening, I wouldn't say it's freezing, it's not Baltic here but it is cold, direct ball forward towards Darwin Nunes, controls it well in his upper thigh, challenged by Pesira, Pesiado and he gets it back to the goalkeeper Vindel and then another mistake on the edge of the penalty here, and they nearly give it away again. Sorensen has fouled McAllister, and Liverpool are going to have a penalty. Alexis McAllister, who sprinted in to put pressure on Asger Sorensen, 
and then he had to scramble and he has tripped the Argentinian on his way into the box and it is going to be a penalty to Liverpool. We've not played five minutes yet. Yeah, we've just yet, we've got a monitor in front of here, so we've seen a replay of it and he is not going to change his mind in that one. It's a stick on penalty. He's waiting to get the, the OK on it, but right now, clear as day and well done Liverpool. We're just a couple of minutes into it, there's been a chance and now a penalty kick both from exactly the same play. They get the ball out, they play it, and a player's got his back to the goal, but they're not quick enough on it. Liverpool on to him, zipped in like a mongoose there. Got the penalty kick, and it could be uh, the perfect start. Liverpool's press, which has always been such an important part of their game under Jurgen Klopp, and, and they've not allowed the spark to prank defence to settle at all this evening. There's quite a few regular penalty takers not available for Jurgen Klopp, so it's Alexis McAllister who has placed the ball, he won the penalty, he is preparing to take it. He has scored two Premier League goals for Liverpool since joining the club. He provided that wonderful assist for Darwin Nunes at the weekend. It is McAllister against Vindau. Liverpool looking to take the lead in Prague on 5 Live and BBC Sounds. He waits for the signal from the referee from Spain. Goalkeeper bending his knees, bouncing slightly on the goal line. McAllister still being made to wait. He glances at the referee. Now, here he comes, right foot and it scores! McAllister puts the keeper the wrong way. Spot to Prague nil, Liverpool won. It's the perfect start for Jurgen Klopp in this competition that he needs to complete the full set. Well, we talked about it before the game. What do you want to try and do? Try and get this game finished. Oh, gun and dust as early as possible. Instead, you're on. This is a bit early now. We're only five minutes into the game. Liverpool have had a penalty scored out. They could have had a second goal as well. And uh, lovely penalty that shows goalkeeper one way. Total eyes. It spins it to the goalkeeper's right there. Keeper's probably out 10 yards away from it by the time the ball goes into the net. But it's so smart the way Liverpool knew where the weakness is. And they have won it brilliantly. And so, you know what? And they won't stop doing it either. They keep on trying to do that, close them down high up the pitch, and they may get more soon. Liverpool's pressing remains amongst the best in the business, and Jurgen Klopp's team have forced more height turnovers than any other team in the Europa League this season. And that will unsettle Sorensen, Vitek, and, and Krejci. And you know, these defenders already looking nervous tonight against high profile opposition. Here comes Haraslin, and he runs into Kanate, who takes him down, and it's a free kick to Spart to Prague, 10 yards outside the penalty area. Slightly left of centre, Kanate wasn't taking any chances there, he was worried that the uh, Slovakia was going to power pass him, it's a deliberate foul, it's a free kick to Spart to Prague. Well, there was just a wee moment there, um, I've seen very little of this referee today, I have my concerns mm. already, right, I'll give you that in a moment, why? I think uh, he's the most noticeable person on this football field at the moment. <laughs> His actions are off the scale. Um, and he seems to want to be the, the centre of attention all the time. Right now, he's away talking to a player, so he wants the cameras on him right away. I just thought for a moment there he was going to go for a card that would have been unnecessary. Jose Maria Sanchez, the referee from Spain. Here comes the free kick for Sparta. Kelleher thought about coming off his goal line, then he retreated back. Cody Gakpo won the header. And then Endo completes the clearance, it'll come down near the halfway line. Preciado playing it off, Darwin Nunes comes back to the Ecuadorian, and then as he plays it forward, Liverpool regain position again with, with Andrew Robinson. The referee did make McAllister wait a long time for the penalty, and that was all about ensuring the players were outside the penalty, but he was making a big fuss yeah, about but, but why, why was he doing that? It's not your job to do that, it's your job to penalise it when it happens. And he was walking around the D, I couldn't believe it. And when the penalty was taken, he did not watch the penalty kick. He watched the line. It, didn't, it was a very, very strange attitude the referee's got. Now, it may well be that he's got an unusual thing. He's asking his officials at the side to watch the action while he watches the ball as it's kicked. Very, very unusual referee. Also, Maria Sanchez, who was also the referee uh, for Liverpool's game against uh, Ajax last season in the Champions League. So. Good start for Liverpool away in the Czech Republic this evening. McAllister's goal from the penalty spot. Sparta Prague nil at Liverpool 1. What about Roma against Brighton? Here's Alistair Bruce Ball. 
seven minutes in in the Stadio Olimpico Roma nil Brighton nil both teams have come close to scoring though Jason Steele with a sharp reflex save to deny Romelu Lukaku a powerful header from close range and Simon Odingra Brighton's first shot of the night took a big deflection and hit the post Roma nil Brighton nil Max Allison nine and a half minutes played in Prague Spartan nil Liverpool won Kanate rolls the ball to Gerald Quonsa Quonsa who Started the Premier League game against Luton, started against Burnley, started the FA Cup match against Southampton. This is his 21st appearance for the first team this season, Gerald Kwanzaa. It's been a real breakthrough campaign for him. I know he's played in the, the first team before this, but he's, he's making his name, he's becoming a regular now. As uh, Sparta have possession with Asker Sorensen. Sorensen, who is uh, one of the Sparta players who would miss the second leg back at Anfield if he was to pick up a, a yellow card tonight. Smart time by turned by Haraslin and he's taken down and it's a free kick to Sparta just inside their own penalty that's twice that Haraslin has had possession and twice he's been fouled by Liverpool opponents to be honest the referee like, he stopped it he's having a word that, as I say he's getting more time on the, on the screen than any other player just now the referee but he's right to stop it there I think he's got that one wrong I think that's a little count I think he's he's been very 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 soft in Liverpool there because the players are away and that's pretty close to a rugby tackle yeah. well, Ashland, who did wave an imaginary yellow of his own which uh, which could have seen him books but anyway play back underway Vindal the goalkeeper pumps it long Joe Gomez playing it right back for Liverpool tonight heads it down Elliot can't get a firm touch on it Kwanzaa heads it towards Gakpo takes it down on his chest and then immediately challenged by Zeleni and then Sparta Bragg regained possession again with the Czech international on the left hand side low ball along the edge of the halfway uh, along the, the, the sort of paint of the halfway line and then a touch back towards Krejci infield again to Vitek Sparta trying to put a few passes together here and build up a bit of confidence Vitek goes long Kupsta the Czech number nine runs to the edge of the penalty area where Kweevin Keller who dressed all in orange comes out and heads the ball out for a throw in but it won't be a throw because Kukta was offside and that will be a free kick to Liverpool on the edge of their own penalty and area he was offside I would say 50 yards 40 <laughs> yards away from where they took it um, but he's definitely got that right there's some, some unusual officiating today but it's, it's okay so mistake far. by Joe Gomez gives an opportunity for Sparta to cross from the left Zeleni though can't put it any higher than Kanate who's headed it out towards the sideline and the ball goes out for a throw in to Sparta Prague attacking position down the left 12 minutes played five live in BBC Sounds and Radio Merseyside this evening Sparta Prague near Liverpool won McAllister's goal as Sparta fans all very coordinated are holding up a montage they've got little plastic sheets that they're holding above their head and uh, spelling out the word victory which is not what the scoreboard is telling us but victory is what they want ball played into the penalty area Liverpool with plenty of bodies back there can clear away and Darwin Nunes is on the counter here and Preciado sprints back with him that's good defending gets there ahead of Darwin Nunes and heads it back to the goalkeeper Vinda under major pressure there Preciado who's second favourite he thought uh, but he managed to get back there he's not the tallest player but he got in front of Darwin Nunes and just seconds before that certainly the best chance of the game that uh, Sparta have actually got uh, back post there couldn't get a header on it but the speed in which Liverpool actually managed to, to break there was rather brilliant there actually I, was, I thought it was a chance to be honest it was brilliant defending I think it was McAllister just beside the line there gets his head in the way there and within about three seconds Liverpool have a half a chance but uh, that man Preciado stopped him Sparta Prague nil, Liverpool won, drop ball on the edge of the Sparta penalty area and Asker Sorensen rolls it back to the goalkeeper Vindal who's, um, well, we mentioned the, the multi-colour of the, the Sparta supporters and their scarves before the game, he is, that, that's a proper multi-colour clash of oranges and purples and pinks that the Danish goalkeeper is wearing away to our right-hand side, Kwanzaa has possession for Liverpool, rolls it to Ibrahima Konate on the right-hand side, now on to Joe Gomez, first time flick towards Cody Gappa, who's done really well to keep that in play, flicked it one side of Krejci and ran around the other, now he's challenged by Solbakken he's still going here Cody Gakpo Solbakken has another nibble at him referee was close to it and says play on Kukta tries to play a direct ball forward looking for Bermancevic and then the flag is raised and the locals are not happy that was a tighter call but Sparta Prague deemed to be offside again oh I don't know about that one I don't know if I would have given that for as an offside but it's really interesting the way Liverpool are really pushing up very very high leaving it one and one time and time again 
But then again, Sparta Prague are doing exactly the same thing. This game really doesn't look as if it's going to finish 1 0, does it? Diaz beaten to the ball by Kain Karinin, the Finnish international in the middle of the field. And then good industry by Preciado to play it out to the right hand side to Vitik. Sparta beginning to find their passes, beginning to display a bit of confidence, but uh, they'll be disappointed that they are 1 0 down already, that they're beginning to find their groove. Here's an opportunity, Harassland shoots, saved by Kelleher, onto the crossbar, and then acrobatically, Joe Gomez saves it on the goal line. That still could have gone in after it came off the goalkeeper. Liverpool survived their biggest scare so far. It's still Sparta 0 Liverpool 1. This is turning out to be an exciting game. Yeah, it's just what I said to you. Just moments ago, this does not look like a one nil. This looks like definitely opportunities for both sides, and that's in the past two minutes. Sparta, they have had two brilliant opportunities, but you're absolutely right. That is the better of the two. It's a great save for Keller, huh? Yeah. But still had work to be done. I thought for a moment the referee was going to give a free kick for the pass back to the goalkeeper because it landed in Keller's hands, but I'll let that one go as well. But you're right, game on, very open. Fifi Keller, who's making his 19th appearance of the season for Liverpool in all competitions, and he's made some big saves in recent weeks. He's made a very big save there. Liverpool still lead by a goal to nil. There's a goal in Rome. Rome against Brighton. Alistair Bruce Ball. Less than 15 minutes into this one, and Brighton already behind. Paolo Dybala has scored rounding Jason Steele. It was a perfect ball from deep. It sprung open the Brighton defence. It was initially flagged as offside. Then it was checked by the video assistant referee. Goal stands. Roma 1, Brighton 0. Belmacevic into the penalty area for Sparta. Sent in a cross come shot that's uh, received by Quibi Keller. But another good counter attack for Sparta Prague, who are beginning to ask questions on Liverpool now. Well, what about the turn by Harris went down this left hand side there? Yeah. Uh, honestly, Vengeo <laughs> Gomez had to buy a ticket to get back in. He sent them all over the place there. Left them completely for dead. Put the ball into the middle. Probably a little bit too much uh, juice on it when it went in there. Might have been offside at a push, but that three times in a row, that high line of Liverpool's has looked very, very edgy indeed. So Liverpool leading by a goal to nil here. It was 1 0 to Liverpool at the city ground at the weekend against Nottingham Forest. That was the first time this season that Liverpool had won a, a Premier League game by a scoreline of 1 0. But 1 uh, 0 it is here. Sparta, who did come from behind against Galatasaray in the last round and they'll be hoping that what we've seen of them, the green shoots of recovery in recent minutes, might suggest that they have a way back into this. The Czech champions, Krejci, ball into midfield towards Harassling that wasn't very accurate, and McAllister was able to nip in and regain possession for Liverpool. Diaz, simple to Robertson on the left-hand side, infield to Gerald Quanza, now Konate. Liverpool moving from left to right across the field. Joe Gomez plays a direct ball forward. Well, that's very accurate. Picks out Cody Gakpo. Tried to flick it on into his own path into the penalty area. And he was unable to bring it with him. But then a last touch off the defender, Krejci, means that Liverpool get a corner on the right-hand side. 17 and a half minutes played. Spark to Prague nil. Liverpool one on five live. Yeah, and it's going to have great taste just now. During the open play, Sparta are leaving three players up. This is not a team that's scared of the team that's top of the Premier League England they believe in themselves completely in this game and although they're 1-0 down it's not a fearful performance it's a performance a team that thinks they can get something out of this game so the corner is going to be taken by Andrew Robertson right hand side as Liverpool come forward this will be an in-swinger from the left footed Scott here he comes short run up nice little whip on that headed down by Vitik gets it well outside the penalty area Joe Gomez will send it back in for Liverpool looking for Robertson on the right hand side who stretches but can't control and the ball goes out for a goal kick to Sparta Prague who trail here to Liverpool by a goal to nil Pat Nevin very noticeable they played out for the goalkeeper a moment ago and the keeper did not this time play it into the centre of the midfield but they've lost one a penalty kick and almost lost a goal before that he's actually been a little bit more sensible about it and we know we've watched in the Premier League for so long now teams continuing to do that even when you lose A possession then B goals well Sparta have decided we're not having that we lost one goal we're not, have, not losing another one in that position Sparta manager is Brian Priska former Portsmouth player played in England for a season under 
Alan Perran and uh, Harry Redknapp played against Liverpool three times in that campaign, home and away in the league, and he also played against them in the FA Cup, but he lost all three games, Brian Christian. Uh, his team are trailing here, we've got a Ajax at a moment, but this is a chance for Sparta Prague. Preciado down the right-hand side, sends it across, Canate gives it back to Preciado, shoots left-footed, and it's deflected out for a corner again. This is really good pressure. Let's go to Ajax against Aston Villa, Charlie Slater. 19 minutes on the clock, it's goalless, but Villa struggling to get into this at the moment. The line their best friend attack after attack from Ajax and they keep catching themselves offside but Villa need to improve, 0-0 corner to Sparta Prague on the left hand side Bermancevic who's on loan from Toulouse has come across to take it scored against Copenhagen in the Champions League qualifiers back at the start of the season Liverpool have brought all their outfield players into the penalty area to defend this 20 minutes on the stadium clock here comes the delivery high towards the back post Kelleher stretching got a touch fell to the ground didn't get much propulsion away Preciado back in Kelleher again excellent save leaping up to tip it over the crossbar corner to Sparta and the home side are on top of the moment to be fair Sparta have been magnificent for 10 minutes they have not given it up at all they've had three or four very very good chances great play here's the latest corner sent in and it's headed away and out for a third corner in succession I think that came off Alexis McAllister yeah I mean there's a number of players out there harassing I have to say he's been brilliant on the left hand side I mean he's a top goal scorer he can play a bit but he's leaving players for dead all over the place but Pressy I don't know right he's been just as special Bermancevic is in-swinger, Kelleher couldn't get off his line, headed down by Gakpo, but it's still inside the penalty area, Vitek will try and keep it alive, and he's done really well, shrugs off Diaz, sent in the cross, what a catch by Kelleher, he falls awkwardly, he might have hurt himself there, the goalkeeper, that was acrobatic, he sprung as if he was on a trampoline, but then he fell really awkwardly the goalkeeper when the ball came back into his hands and he might need a bit of treatment here remember Liverpool already about uh, without Alisson they will be concerned that their Irish goalkeeper may have a problem here in Prague do you know what and it was the second time maybe even the third time in the minute he had an unusual fall straight onto his back however this last one definitely winded number one but number two the angle he went down there he might have actually twisted some of his coxings a part of his back or whatever but there was no doubt it was, he was, he's hurt there. Yeah, he landed all wrong. And, and as Pat says, you know, hopefully it's just wind or some of that. But the way he landed, his arm collapsed under him in a way that just didn't look natural. We're getting to see a replay of it here. Oh, he lands on his elbow and he yelps out in pain at the moment of impact. The, the, the only upside of it is he's gone down, he's landed flat on his back, you know, almost like a wrestler. <laughs> flat on his back. And you want to land flat on your back, you don't want it to be at an angle. A bit of an elbow come down as well there. <laughs> and just for a millisecond after it, he sat up. And the fact that he sat up for just a second, that makes you think oh, he'll be okay. He's back up at his feet, and I, I think you called it right, Pat, and winded was the issue more than anything else. And Liverpool will breathe a sigh of relief because they wouldn't want to lose Quivin Keller in the current situation. Uh, Adrian, uh, the third choice uh, keeper, is available on the bench. They've also got the young Pole, Fabian Morozek who would be uh, the, if in case of real emergency, break glass option for Jurgen Klopp this evening. Uh, but good to see that Keller is OK. But he's been, the um, although Liverpool have scored, he's been the busier goalkeeper in the game. Um, I, I honestly, I have to say that they're, they're shading it. It's a better team at the moment. I mean, Liverpool started very well, threw confidence about them. They just thought maybe a bit of naivety about Sparta Prague at the start of the game because they were playing so high. But it's not naivety, it is utter self-belief. And they are incredibly unlucky not to be a level just now. This is Five Live Sport from the BBC. Liverpool in action again in the Premier League on Sunday. We'll have commentary from Anfield of uh, Liverpool against Manchester City. It is a 3.45 kickoff, unusual kickoff time. Uh, on Sunday, we'll also bring you West Ham against Burnley online and Brighton against Nottingham Forest on Sports Extra. Both of those two o'clock kickoffs on Sunday. On Saturday, Crystal Palace against Luton is our pick of the three o'clock games. England against Ireland to follow in the Six Nations. You can listen to the Arsenal Brentford game on Sports Extra at tea time on Saturday. And that's a really big game for Mikel Arteta's team because with both Liverpool and Manchester City playing on Sunday, Arsenal can go top of the Premier League if they win at home against Brentford. So Sports Extra on uh, Saturday tea time to listen to that. Here in Prague, Endo has possession 
for Liverpool. He got his head up, he was looking for a pass, and Cook has been able to nip in and pick his pocket, and here comes Sparta once again. Bermantiewicz challenged by Kwanzaa, who does well to shepherd him out, and it goes for a throw-in, which has been taken really quickly. Their restarts have been recycled rapidly, and here's a chance to cross Bermantiewicz to the byline, left-hand side, Robertson's clearance isn't great, cross his own goal, still a chance available here. Karinin couldn't get the angle to take a shot, McAllister smothered him, and now Liverpool will clear it away down the other end. This is Diaz on the left for Liverpool, cutting in off the wing more centrally. Rolls it in front of Harvey Elliott. Two defenders around him. Gives it back out to the left side. Here is Darwin Nunez. Five yards outside the penalty area. Shoots and scores! That's an incredible goal by Darwin Nunez. His third in the Europa League this season. Wow, that ooze quality. He was fully five yards outside the penalty area. That is a long-range rifle of a shot from the Uruguayan. And Liverpool, who've been under pressure, now double their lead with 25 minutes played. After all the pressure that had been under there, they break away, they're very, very comfortable, but he's wide there. And what's it, your commentary? There was nothing really on. There's not a shot on, he's too far out. The angle was too wide there. The bend he gets in the ball there, it doesn't land in the corner. Keeper goes towards the corner and it bends back towards the goalkeeper and ends up almost hitting the crossbar in the centre of the goal. That makes it sound like a poor shot. It was brilliant, the movement in that ball. You can watch that all day long. Keeper has no idea what has happened there. So, Liverpool... Jurgen Klopp will just be delighted with this. They were under pressure. Keller had had to make a string of impressive saves. Sparta Bragg will be thinking, we can get back into this by half-time. And suddenly, the task now doubly difficult for the post. Uh, the host, McAllister's penalty. Darwin Nunes with a brilliant strike to the top corner. He could not have hit that better. Sparta nil, Liverpool 2. And that's what quality gives you. <laughs> Absolutely, it's what pure quality gives you. Saying will be very impressed by the play that you've got from these players, but that was the very definition of a worldie. It was the very definition. Uh, whatever Liverpool have scored first in the Europa League this season, they've always gone on to win the game. This is what Jurgen Klopp would have wanted ahead of this very busy 10 days to come. Manchester City in the Premier League on Sunday, the return leg against Prague at Anfield next week, and then it's the FA Cup against Manchester United the following weekend. And this sets the mood, sets the agenda for Klopp with a good start here. He may even think about giving Mo Salah a run now in the second half of this game. May be able to rest one or two as well. It has started so well for his Liverpool team. Still a long way to go, of course. 27 minutes on the clock. Kanate has it on the halfway line. Gives it to Joe Gomez on his right-hand side. Under pressure from Harassland. He turns and rolls it back to Quivin Kelleher. And then a pass to Kwanzaa, who didn't have much time or space there. Two opponents around him. Kwanzaa's done well to wriggle out of that and keep it moving. And now Joe Gomez will bring it over the halfway line. Gomez for Liverpool into Luis Diaz midway inside Sparta Prague territory gives it to Harvey Elliott on the right hand side back to Gomez again more authority about Liverpool now more comfort about these passes as they sling it around inside the Sparta Prague half Endo onto Kwanzaa 10 yards inside the opponent's territory Robertson right out by the sideline on the left hand side then a direct ball towards Diaz 10 yards outside the penalty area he will flick it back into Endo Liverpool hugging possession and at the moment, Sparta Bragg can't get a kick. Yeah, this is what you maybe expected for Liverpool, you know, to hold this up possession in the final third. But it didn't happen for about 15 minutes there. They couldn't get, you know, they weren't in the game, but they were playing on the break. And, you know, if you're coming in, if you're just tuning in to Radio 5 Live now, nearly half an hour gone and Liverpool are 2 0 up, you probably think you know the story. I promise sure you, you don't. <laughs> this has been a superb game, and Sparta Prague have been very, very good. Liverpool basically have had two chances. McAllister won a penalty, scored it, and Darwin Nunes has hit a worldie. And otherwise, Sparta have been the, the attacking team creating all the chances. Sparta Prague nil, Liverpool two. Liverpool fans will be rejoicing at this. What about Brighton away in Roma? Alistair Bruce Ball. Yes, Liverpool 2-0 up, Brighton 1-0 down in the Stadio Olimpico. They responded well, though, to the Dybala goal. Danny Welbeck's gone close to an equaliser. Adingra's perfect cross to the far post. Welbeck's downward header, he thought he'd scored, and Spilar, the goalkeeper, somehow saved with his legs. Roma 1, Brighton 0. Thanks very much, Alistair. Darwin Nunes with his 15th goal of the season for Liverpool in all competitions. They seem to take a little 
bit long to settle in last season. He'd been very unlucky. He hit the woodwork, I think, more than any player last season, Darwin Nunes. But he looks every bit the Liverpool number nine now. Yeah, it's been really dangerous. And he's loving the fact he's playing against a team that are pushing up a bit. So he can go behind. I mean, he's, he'll go and hold the ball up very well. He'll, he'll run wide. He prepares that run, you know, from centre to wide so that he can go and get the ball in those areas. But he's, he's asking a lot of different questions and he's, uh, he's, he's tireless, isn't he? He just keeps on going. And that's what we see this. He's chasing the keeper down. It's the, the confidence you can always tell in a striker. Some of his finishes lately dinks over goalkeepers and this one powered into the top corner. That is a number nine who is very much in form. And between scoring and assists, Darwin Nunes has now been involved in 10 goals in his last 10 games in all competitions. Here's a question, though. I mean, you've, have you seen the, the replay of the goal? I mean, where the, the ball goes in the net, are you saying bad goalkeeping? Because I'm not. I think there's so much incredible movement yeah, on that ball, the pace of it. And, you know, usually a goalkeeper will be disappointed with himself when it goes in the centre of the, the, of the net from about 30 odd yards out. I'm not even pointing the keeper. I just think it's an amazing finish. Yeah, it was, it was of the highest order, that finish from Darwin Nunes. And Liverpool, two goals to the good. Away in the Czech Republic, Sparta fans are twirling their multicoloured scarves. They take it in turns, the, this quadrant stadium, one side does it, then the far side does it, now it moves away to the left-hand side. This is all very synchronised from the support of a team who've been great and will clearly be disappointed that their team are two goals behind. Vindal has got a goal kick away to our right-hand side. You're thinking that they must have an effect on their, their team because the team haven't given up in any way whatsoever. They don't look that downhearted <clears throat> yet, anyway. But if you've got this sort of fan base around you that are sticking with you the whole time, as a player, you can't. You should never give up. You should keep on giving, and it helps with the belief as well. Kutta turns into Kwanzaa and is relieved of possession. Here come Liverpool again, Gakpo to Harvey Elliott. Elliott, who will claim the assist for the Darwin Nunes goal, but it wasn't exactly playing him into a dangerous position. It was just a pass midway inside the half, but Darwin Nunes put a sprinkle of magic on the situation with a, a glorious finish. Gakpo tries to return it to Elliott here. Ball runs out of play, and that will be a goal kick to Sparta Prague away to our right-hand side. So, Liverpool, two goals to the good. Kelleher making a few good saves. Liverpool looking for a fourth consecutive clean sheet. It's almost two years since they've done that. Diaz slips, but is able to get back to his feet to get possession. And then McAllister gives it to Robertson. And back again to, to Gerald Kwanzaa. Gerald Kwanzaa, who is involved in my, my most favourite stat um, that I think I've heard all season oh, go I'm going to go, go build it up I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to do it right I'm going to wait for a break and play but uh, trailing coming up on five live soon my favorite stat I've heard all season Excellent. Um, which we, we will wait for a little break remind me to do it now I'll bloody forget to do it <laughs> here is Sorensen just outside his penalty area gives it forward towards Bermacevic challenge from behind and McAllister the guilty party on this occasion that'll be a free kick right here's the stat are you ready Go so Gerald Kwanzaa, he scored in this competition in December. End of the groups, ah, here we go. Preciado attacking down the right-hand side, pulls it back, comes off the knee of Cookdown over the crossbar. He was swinging his right boot to hit it. It came off his knee, and it sails over the top. Yeah, again, Preciado has got himself in great positions. They play a 3-4-3, and he's a wide midfielder of that floor. So he gets into great positions all the time. <laughs> and he's a lovely player, and he's one of those players that... You look around, you might get a move away into a bigger league. Um, I'd have given a shorter answer there, but that would have given you a chance to get back in your start. And I don't want that to happen yet. <laughs> right, so Gerald Kwanzaa <laughs> scores in December, and he then completes a set for Liverpool where a Liverpool player whose surname starts with every letter of the alphabet has now scored a goal for the club. Oh, so excellent. all the XYZ, everyone, Q was the one that they were waiting for. And he got the goal, which that 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 blows my mind. Oh, great. Okay, name them. I thought you'd be more impressed than that. <laughs> no, no, I'm just going to say name them. I would not be naming them. No. <laughs> no, my everybody else who's listening. All right, who is the X and who yeah, is the Z? Let's let's look it up. <laughs> but I've I've been uh, authoritatively told that that is correct. So here in Prague this evening, Sparta nil, Liverpool two. If you're just joining our coverage, Alexis McAllister tripped for a penalty, scored the penalty. Darwin Nunes has blasted to the top right-hand corner. Jurgen Klopp thoroughly enjoying how the game is going. Here comes 
Diaz towards the edge of the penalty area. Gakpo tries to help him out. Chance for Gakpo to shoot. Doesn't pull the trigger. Gives it back to McAllister on the D. Now to Joe Gomez who arrives. Gomez tries to shoot and it's blocked out for a corner. Corner to uh, Liverpool on the right-hand side here on Five Live. Let's go for an update. Ajax against Aston Villa. Charlie Slater. 34 on the clock. Still nil-nil. But Ajax should be in front. Brian Bobby, their top goal scorer, in down the inside left. Sticks it into the side netting after going one-on-one -on -one with Emi Martinez. Nil-nil. Corner's going to be taken by Alexis McAllister. We'll get team news to the Manchester City women against Chelsea women FA Women's League Cup game in a moment. There's already a point of order about your stat. Oh, here we which go. We'll get on to in a moment oh, after this corner. Go. Point of order <laughs> from Mr. Incoming. John Murray. Oh, fancy that. Here comes McAllister's delivery from the right hand side. Chance for a shot from Endo. He was off balance. He's managed to get a volley on it and it goes over the top. And um, point of order, I, I yield the floor to the right honourable gentleman from Northumberland. This may well be bordering on the pernickety. G well, fancy that from him, <laughs> right. A fact, not a stat. Oh, well, very good point. <laughs> very, very, I yield, I yield on that one. As usual, and, the and, and by the way, he also had it and wanted to use it, so he's got it. Ah, <laughs> fantastic, fantastic. He was keeping that up his lengthy sleeve for some time. Sparta nil, Liverpool two. Karate with possession. Good pass out to the left hand side to Robertson. Ten minutes to go to half time now. It's a game that's flown by so far. There's been no stagnant part of the game. It's been end to end. Sparta will feel a little hard done by here that Liverpool have been able to poach the two goals, but, but that's the element of this that will please Jurgen Klopp uh, the most, because it's not this has been, not been a world-class Liverpool performance by any means, and yet they are comfortably ahead, both on the night and in the two-legged tie. Exactly, but once again, they've lost the play, here, have lost possession, and they've got three men up. Varaslin, just outside the penalty area, it's a Kukta, shoots, saved by Kelleher, it came back to... I think it was Bermacevic, and he stumbled as he tried to shoot, and he's put it wide. What an opportunity. Kelleher made the save, but he pushed it into the path of the serve, and he, he just tripped himself as he went to pull the trigger. What a chance for Sparta to get one back. I mean, to be honest, how many teams this season have made this amount of chances against Liverpool? It's really, really strange. I mean, time and time again, they're getting chances and half chances. You felt very sorry for him there, Bermancevic, gets himself into a good position, follows it up, you think it's a striker's tapping, but it just gets lodged between his, his feet there. And, uh, you know, again, you've got to say, they're doing brilliantly well. They're chasing down, they're closing down, but the, the absolute quality in the last third, that's the difference. You know, and it just shows you, this is why strikers are played the, the big box, isn't it? You know, you've got to take your chances. I was at Anfield last week, Southampton had some early chances at the FA Cup, didn't take them, Liverpool were able to win the game comfortably. Against a team like Liverpool, if you get a chance, you have to score. Well, and that was the absolute story of the game in Munich, Munich the other night when I was there. You know, Immobile couldn't, Kane could. Endos ball into the penalty area, Elliot hits it first time but puts it wide. And apologies to Masfaruki, who we've made to wait to the Academy Stadium. But here is the team news. Manchester City women against Chelsea women, Mass. Yeah, and this League Cup semi-final matchup as well between the two sides. Level on points at the top of the WSL. Manchester City on a winning run of 12 in all competitions now, including a league win over Chelsea just before the international break. So no surprise, perhaps. Gareth Taylor names an unchanged City 11. Two changes for Chelsea from the weekend's win over Leicester. Lauren James is back after suspension. Melanie Lobholz starting as well. Thanks very much. We've got a delay in play here. One of the Sparta defenders is going to need some treatment, but Liverpool leading by two goals to nil in Prague. Pat Nevin. I think Bermancevic might need some mental treatment as well, because we just had a look at his miss there. I was giving him a wee bit too much. <laughs> it's horrible, because the ball comes to his right foot, and he seems to jump up, and he hits it with his right foot, and instead of just falling through, he hits it onto his left foot. It's, it's up there with... Haaland's miss it the other, the other day. It's up there. Oof. It really is up there. It's a stinker of a miss. All right, we're not missing any action here at the moment. Just to uh, remind you, uh, BBC Radio 5 and BBC Sounds has secured exclusive audio rides for the heavyweight boxing clash. Anthony Joshua against Francis Ngannou uh, uh, tomorrow. Former UFC heavyweight champion Ngannou appearing in only his second professional 
boxing contest. You might remember he narrowly lost to Tyson Fury in his first fight uh, last October. You can follow all the action via the BBC Sport website as well. You can listen to the commentary uh, here on Five Live and all the build-up on the Five Live boxing pod as well, uh, which is always good value listening to, uh, to Steve Bunce and company. And that's available right now on BBC Sounds. We're back underway. Vindal has cleared long into the Liverpool half. It's controlled by Preciado on the far side. He is hounded backwards by Cody Gakpo and has to retreat all the way back to the goalkeeper again. Vindal does the same thing again, boots it forward. Liverpool's defence were high up. What's happening here? Harassland's running through. One-on-one -on -one with Kelleher. Stumbles and Karate clears it away. Wow. Liverpool's defence seemed to be running in quicksand there. It wouldn't have counted. He was offside, Harassland. I, but I, I think it may have counted. Let's have a look. The ref played the ball early. Actually, that is a brilliant piece of assistant refereeing because the ball was in the air for ages, but he was right. He was just offside. But the finishing hasn't been great. No. They have got themselves into an amazing position, sometimes off, sometimes not. But they just can't seem to finish. And they've got three players up there that are all noted strikers. It's another opportunity to give Spark to Bright the belief they may be able to get back into this game but they need to get their shooting boots on and it wouldn't have counted because he was offside but he didn't score anyway he tried to go around Kelleher and the, the touch that he took brought him into Kanate who was able to clear the ball away Liverpool lead by two goals still McAllister scored for the penalty spot after six minutes Darwin Nunes scored up to 25 here's Luis Diaz winning the ball off Sorensen into the penalty area Gakpo tries to shoot left footed comes back to him a second time no room to shoot again Endo will have a crack that comes back off Marcus Sol back in Sparta Prague can't get full control of the ball here they're just ricocheting it away they're deflecting but they can't get passes as McAllister tries to play it back to Kwanzaa and he's done well McAllister to hold on to possession and Liverpool have it on the halfway line yeah. once again and this is what Jurgen Klopp would want been able to hold the ball control the game slow it down Sparta Prague have not allowed Liverpool to do that and that's the most upsetting thing for Liverpool today we'd like a bit of a rest they ain't getting one Jurgen Klopp this is his 88th European match as Liverpool manager. It is more than any previous head coach at Anfield in the past. And in this, his final season, the final few months of the Klopp era, he is pursuing trophies on three more fronts, having already lifted the League Cup. And how he would love the quadruple to send him on his way and to, to really imprint him, you know, not one of just the all-time great Liverpool managers, but one of the all-time great managers full stop. I, you know, it's, it's, it's almost a construct by the media that going for the quadruple. You know, every team's going for it at some point, you know, <laughs> it's the start of the yeah. season. It's a lot to ask, it's unfair to expect it. Here's a chance for Diaz, breaking into the penalty area, left-hand side, Robertson, back to Gakpo, shoots, great save, Vindal, got down well at his near post, that's his best save of the game so far, Liverpool looking to make it 3-0 ahead of half-time. Yeah, I mean, Gakpo, he's, he is smooth on the ball, he just glides over the ground, he's complete control of the ball there, got his back to goal, makes a quick turn, zips it in towards that near post, not only does he save it, but he gets good power in the hand as well, and that wrist, and gets it clear, so very good play all round, not only by Gakpo, but from goalkeeper Vindal as well. And Preciado shields the ball out, it goes out on the far side. Uh, treatment had been received by Asker Sorensen a few minutes ago, and he's not been able to run it off, so there's going to be a change here, and the replacement who'll come on will be Matti Rinesh, who is a midfielder, he was sent off in the first leg of the last round against Galatasaray, he comes on, and maybe the fact they're bringing on a midfielder in place of one of the three central defenders indicates a change in formation, too, from the coach, Brian Prisco. We'll keep our eye on that. Looks like Reynes is going to take up a position on the left-hand side of midfield for now. Spartan nil, Liverpool 2. You were going to uh, say a few moments ago, Pat, we, we, we did uh, break away because Liverpool are attacking, but you said about you know the, the media perception of going for the quadruple yeah, and all that. It's everyone's talking about it, and you can't bat it away because you, they are still in all the competitions, but... It's not a common thing to be done. You know, if you get it, it's almost you'd say at the last minute, wow, isn't that amazing? It's as if 
That's a great ball. ball. Diaz in front of Gakpo. He's in here. Defenders trying to get back. Gakpo pirouettes brilliantly shoots, and it's another good save by Vindal. His body movement there was so impressive from Cody Gakpo, but then he couldn't beat the goalkeeper with a shot. Here comes Joe Gomez. Hit to the penalty area for Liverpool. Tried to give it to Luis Diaz. Ricochets back, and then a shot from Rage from Andy Robertson sails over the top, and that's a goal kick to Sparta Prague, Liverpool finishing this first half strongly. I want to stand now and applaud Cody Gakpo there. A um, number of things. Great strength, um, but he has been dragged back. The normal thing for many modern footballers is just to go straight down there, get the player sent off, you know, and go on with the game. Not him. He wanted to score a goal. He wanted to stay up. That's, I so admire Gakpo in that situation there. He's very, very unlucky. If ever a player deserved to go there, he did for that. However, goalkeeper Vindal was in his way again. Yeah, really good from, from Cody Gakpo. That was Dennis Bergkamp-esque, the way he used his strength there, but also very gracefully. And he, he pirouetted like a ballerina as he tried to get his body in the right position to take a shot. That was, that was excellent from Cody Gakpo. Liverpool come again. Darwin Nunes rolls the ball in front of Cody Gakpo, who's just outside the penalty area on the right-hand side. Back into the centre again to McAllister. Endo gets involved. Luis Diaz, there's always a spare white and green shirt for Liverpool. Diaz shoots and it sails over the top. And another goal in Rome for Alistair Bruce Ball. Got some bad news for Brighton fans just before half-time. Romelu Lukaku has doubled Roma's lead. A rare mistake by Lewis Dunk in the left-back position. Tried to control a long ball downfield. Miscontrolled. Lukaku passed, ran into the area and beat Jason Steele at his near post. Roma 2, Brighton 0. Thanks very much, Alistair. Just hearing Alistair's voice uh, reminds me to plug the fantasy pod available from BBC Sounds, which I saw a clip on social media today where Chris Sutton was being explained what a quality shot is. Uh, which uh, which caused great mirth and uh, is going to be worth uh, listing out in the pod in full, uh, which is available right now. Into stoppage time at the end of the first half in Prague. Three minutes to be added on. Liverpool leading 2-0. Good touch here from Belmantjevic to skip away from two defenders. Sends in a low cross, but Kanate is back there. Harassing shots on target, but saved by Kelleher, diving down to his left-hand side. Yeah, this point in time, it's a great end-to-end -end game. Well, good 45 minutes of football to watch. You can tell these fans are loving it as well. They're 2-0 down, but they know their team are giving almost as good as they're getting. And so I'm very, very impressed with them. But a lot of this is Liverpool as well. There's such an open, positive side who want to attack themselves. And uh, that's why, you know, with Jurgen Klopp, it, as a manager, he makes it a good game to watch because his teams are always exciting and they are today. A mistake by Endo in the midfield there, but he got away with it. McAllister was able to win possession for Liverpool immediately once again. It's a half-time in Amsterdam. Ajax against Aston Villa in the Conference League. Here's Charlie Slater. 0-0, despite the form book, it's been all Ajax in the first half. Best chance came 15 minutes or so before the break. Brobby threw one-on-one with the keeper. Martinez made himself big. Brobby hit the side netting. Villa can count themselves lucky to be level at half-time. It's Charlie, consternation here. Free kick has been awarded to Liverpool. A foul by Marcus Solbakken on Alexis McAllister. The referee seemed to wait for ages and then he gave the free kick to Liverpool. Do you know what is really nice? I mentioned the fact that uh, Cody Gakbo didn't go down there, right? But just for a moment there, you had Solbakken and he was having this little tug and drag alongside McAllister there. And they turned around and they smiled and they shook hands and there's no moaning, complaining. It's a real respect, a real nice feeling out there. So. I had some concerns about the referee for the first five minutes. Do you know what? He's part of the reason why it's been good. He's allowed it to flow, so big personality out there. But he's not been daft about it in the end, so well done, referee. All right, credit where it is uh, due to uh, Jose Maria Sanchez. We have played two minutes of the three being added on for stoppages in Prague. Smart to nil, Liverpool to for now. Looking forward to the halftime coffee, Pat. I had a little sniff before the game. Strong enough to float a horseshoe on it. <laughs> Here is Darwin Nunes into the penalty area. That's incredible. Right-footed shot. It bounced up. He hit it. So straight, so true. It's two goals for the Uruguayan. And Liverpool make it three. Right to the cusp of halftime. He jumps to celebrate at the corner flag. It's 3-0 Liverpool. But it's the Darwin Nunes show in Prague. Well, I'm not sure if it's a world day, but it's not far off, is it? We have to actually mention the fact that a few things were thrown on there. I think it's just plastic beer cartons. And this is the first time we heard quietness around you, because in the end, Nunes has just had a couple of sniffs. And with those couple of sniffs, he has leathered both of them. 
this time on the right hand side catches it in volley facing away from goal put it into the corner and if the game wasn't finished before then it is now and Jürgen and the players and Liverpool fans you can relax 3-0 two goals of the highest order from Darwin Nunes as the referee blows the whistle for half time and that's going to deflate the tyres of Sparta now because they've been full of endeavour they have tried so hard they can't hit a barn door in terms of shooting but they were in it and they're not in it anymore 3-0 the way Liverpool are playing this is all set up for Jurgen Klopp to take a really healthy lead back to Anfield for the second leg precisely what he wanted and uh, not the way he wanted it um, but now they'll try and control the game really enjoyable game but you have to be fair to Sparta they're really unlucky <laughs> yeah. so two goals from Darwin Nunes his performance has been as strong as Czech beer and he is on for a hat-trick in the second half for now at the Letna Stadium Sparta Prag nil Liverpool three Connor Pat thank you very much indeed could easily be three all that what a first half uh, we'll be back for second half commentary in Prague other scores for you it's still Roma 2 Brighton nil into the final seconds of stoppage time at the end of the first half uh, and Ajax nil Aston Villa nil as Charlie Slater was telling us in the Conference League one of the score of note uh, Karabag the first ever team from Azerbaijan to get this far in European competition a 2-0 up against Xabi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen on course to win the Bundesliga this season so there's a potentially big story brewing I'm sure there'll be more on that in the Euroleagues from 9 o'clock tonight uh, we'll keep you up to date with all of the football uh, we're going to talk cricket as well after the latest news on 5 Live with Richard Foster Listen on BBC Sounds. This is BBC Radio 5 Live. Thanks, Steve. Good evening. There's going to be an independent public inquiry into the way the police handled the investigation into the murder of Emma Caldwell. She was strangled in 2005 in South Lanarkshire, but her killer, Ian Packer, wasn't treated as a suspect in the original investigation. The announcement was made in the Scottish Parliament by the Justice Secretary, Angela Constance. 19 years have elapsed between Emma's murder and a conviction. And there can be no doubt of the serious failings that brought a grieving family to have to fight for their right, for Emma's right to justice. The US military is going to build a port in Gaza to get more humanitarian aid into the territory. It'll increase the amount of humanitarian assistance to Palestinians by hundreds of additional truckloads per day. A leading economic think tank says neither Labour nor the Conservatives are being honest about the future spending of the UK. The IFS has criticised some of the measures announced in the budget and says there are key challenges ahead. Our Money and Work reporter Peter Ruddick says there's concern that ministers are playing the system. Essentially, the government was able to say it's meeting its fiscal rules, but only by implying that fuel duty won't be frozen in the future and that public spending will be massively cut. Now, implications that lots of commentators and experts say they're just totally unrealistic. And the IFS saying Labour isn't being honest about the situation either. So it's a plague on both your houses. The daughter of a woman who was killed by her ex-partner fears more people will be killed because of an abuse, abuse prevention scheme is being handled poorly. Claire's law gives people the right to ask the police if their partner has an abusive past. Sweden has formally joined NATO, becoming its 32nd member. The NATO's Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg says Sweden's membership makes the country safer and the alliance stronger. And Pembrokeshire has approved a council tax increase of more than 24% over the next two years. It's the highest rise in the UK. From April, bills will go up by 12.5%, with an increase the following financial year of at least 11.6%. Always intoxicating. What an end to this fixture. Totally captivating. Four in a row now. Every tackle. A ton of power. Every try from every nation. What a try. What a hat trick. Feel every moment of the Six Nations. Six Nations continues Saturday at 2.15. Italy versus Scotland at 4.45. England versus Ireland on 5 Live and 5 Sports Extra. Listen on BBC Sounds. This is 5 Live Sports with Steve Crossman on 5 Live. Listen on BBC Sounds. Second half commentary on the way of Sparta Prague nil Liverpool three. Lots to get through before then. In Formula One, Red Bull have suspended the woman who accused team principal Christian Horner of inappropriate and controlling behaviour. Meanwhile, Horner himself says it's time to draw a line under the whole controversy. Horner has been speaking ahead of this weekend's Saudi Arabian Grand Prix. Well, obviously, there's been an awful lot of uh, you know coverage surrounding this, but one has to go back to the 
to the basis of a grievance was raised, it was fully investigated, and it was dismissed. And from there, we move onwards. And I think an awful lot has been made out of this. Obviously, it has been uh, obviously of, of, of great interest in different elements of the media for, for different reasons. And I think the time now is to, to look forward and to draw a line under it. We're here to go racing. We're here as a Formula One team. And, and the time now is to focus on what is going on on track and, uh, and the performance of the cars and the drivers uh, and where the spotlight should be during the course of a Grand Prix weekend. Christian Horner, the BBC's chief F1 writer, Andrew Benson, has joined us. Um, Andrew, it's, it's not going to go away, this story. What's the latest? Well, Honda, who are Red Bull's engine partner, clearly don't agree with Christian Horner because they've given the BBC a statement which says, we do not have full details on the matter at this point. Therefore, Honda are not in a position to make any detailed comment. We look forward to full clarity as soon as possible. Now, they follow Ford, who haven't commented since uh, the complaint was dismissed by Red Bull. This is uh, Red Bull's future engine partner from 2026, the US car giant. But they did say before that, that, before that decision was made, that they wanted full clarity and they haven't had that yet. Um, what about the Verstappens as well? Because as well as what Christian Horner is saying, there does seem to be a, a really widening rift between the Verstappen family, actually, and the, the Red Bull team principal. Well, Jos Verstappen, Max's father, uh, he said last weekend in Bahrain that the controversy was driving people apart and that the team would explode if Horner remained in his position. He's not commented further. He doesn't want to inflame matters anymore. But um, Max Verstappen uh, had a press conference yesterday, as all drivers do um, in the lead up to races. And uh, he put in a, quite an accomplished performance, actually, Steve. He didn't... Uh, he didn't uh, agree with Jos Verstappen's comments, but he didn't deny them or say he disagreed either. When he was asked about them, he said that Jos was not a liar. Um, and then uh, in terms of whether he agreed or not, he said, I guess he clearly felt like that. But from my side, it doesn't matter being on one side or the other. Of course, as a son of my dad, it would be weird to be on a different side. Thank you very much, Andrew. Our chief F1 writer, Andrew Benson, there. Uh, cricket, India have taken full control of the final test against England in Dharmasala. The home side closed the day on 135 for one. They bowled England out for just 218. Uh, England were 100 for one in the over before lunch. They then collapsed. They lost seven wickets for 83. Uh, Phil Tufnell watched the day's play. Was that a sigh, Phil? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I didn't know I was Sorry. hear me then. <laughs> I'm it always was a listening. bit of a sigh. It was a bit of a sigh because it started so well for England for a start. They won the toss and had first use of a pitch, got through a, a taxing new ball spell, came out the other side, as you said, 100 for one. And then it just all fell apart and we've been seeing it far too much from this England side over in India. They get themselves into some good situations and then just seem to throw it away. Perhaps from a little bit of brainless cricket, a little bit of reckless cricket. Um, but no, disappointing disappointing and frustrating day for England. And also, you know, the, the scores tell the story here. Duck at 27, yeah. Root 26, yeah. Bairstow 29, Folks 24, getting in, getting yeah. out. Absolutely, same old story. You've got to have partnerships. You've got to make the most of the of the pitch as well. First innings runs, you know, are so crucial in Test match cricket, especially in India. Um, but they, as you say, you, you don't necessarily mind someone getting a low score, a three or a four, because you know you've got to get yourself in, and you could get one of those good deliveries early on. But once you've got yourself in, once you got yourself to twenty or thirty, you know that's when that middle order should be looking to kick on and it just hasn't happened for England. Even someone like a Zach Crawley who's had a fantastic series for my money hasn't then gone on and got one of those big hundreds so um, things to work on in that England batting line uh, lineup, and especially that middle order as well. I think it's also sort of relevant to try and work out what England were trying to do. Do you, do you think part of it was because Bummer is bowling and you know the, the ball is talking do you think the idea was well weather him okay we've weathered him let's go on the attack and that's when it went wrong well yeah but I mean you've got to be able to adapt haven't you you mm. know what I mean and when things aren't going so well I mean just I mean the prime example listen Ollie Pope played that fantastic 190 in the first test match but an over before lunch 
uh, cool deeps bowling the, the wrist spinner. Uh, you know, two overs beforehand, he wasn't in, the England batsmen weren't picking cool deep, so they didn't know which way it was going to be spinning. They didn't know which one was the wrong one, and uh, he decides an over before lunch to come running down the pitch, misses the wrong one, and is stumped. You know, that, that, that's a cardinal sin. I know that this, you know, bas has been great and what have you, but um, you know, there are still rules to play in Test match cricket, and that is if you're not picking the wrist spinner. Don't run down the wicket at him and over before lunch. And already in the in the what two hours they had at the end of the day's play, India yeah. did what India have been doing, which is just taking the game away from England, just squeezing them. Uh, absolutely, and showed how you should pl- sort of play on those kind of pitches. Got through Jimmy Anderson and Mark Wood, and then it was back over to the inexperienced uh, England spin bowlers who have done brilliantly. You know, who have done brilliantly. But I mean. Is this test match going to be a test match even too far for our young uh, spin bowlers? I I think it might be. If they don't get early wickets tomorrow, um, it could be a bit of an avalanche. Lovely stuff, Phil. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Phil Tufnell with us. TMS podcast with uh, Phil Jonathan Agnew. Deep Desk Gupta available on BBC Sounds right now. The TMS team uh, back with live text commentary of the match from 4am tomorrow morning. You can follow that on the BBC Sport website and app elsewhere. Rugby, Exeter wing Emmanuel Fay will both so is one of three changes to England's starting team ahead of Ireland at Twickenham this Saturday. Full commentary on five live. Alex Mitchell and George Martin also come in uh, for Ireland. Hugo Keenan has recovered from a knee injury to start. Elsewhere, Gregor Townsend has made three changes to Scotland's starting lineup ahead of their trip to Rome. Uh, Andy, Chris, Andy Christie, Cameron Redpath, George Horn all start. That match is on Five Sports Extra from two o'clock. More, of course, on the Six Nations with Sonia at eight o'clock. Once we're done with the football, that's also a big night of boxing, as we've been telling you tomorrow night. Anthony Joshua and Francis Ngannou showdown in Saudi Arabia. Five Live has commentary of the fight and all the build-up from 9pm. There'll be more from the boxing later uh, where we'll be live in Riyadh. Lots of good football going on tonight. We've been telling you Women's League Cup semi-final Manchester City against Chelsea gets underway at 7.15. Maz Fariki. And with respect to this competition, Steve, this matchup feels like it has more riding on it than simply a place in the final at Molyneux at the end of the month. City's win at Chelsea just before the international break. One that means that Gareth Taylor's side a level, of course, on points with the champions at the top of the WSL. And he has said in the build-up that he's expecting a Chelsea reaction following that feet for Emma Hayes's side. Taylor names an unchanged City 11. Lauren James is back after suspension for Chelsea. That's one of two changes for the visitors, which means we have two of the most exciting players going forward in the English game this season, going head-to-head tonight in James and the Deborah Sells top scorer, City's Khadija Shaw. Also on the pitch tonight, Chelsea's Colombian forward, Myra Ramirez, who scored her first WSL goal in Sunday's win at Leicester. The winners will play Arsenal, remember, for the first trophy of the domestic season on March the 31st. Thank you very much, Maz. Quick reminder of uh, the football now and coming up. So at eight o'clock, it's Freiburg versus West Ham in the Europa League. Benfica against Rangers gets underway at the same time. Remember, these are first legs of the last 16. We'll keep you up to date with those games uh, during Five Live Rugby and then also during the Euroleagues from 9pm tonight. Live scores just underway in the second half in the Conference League last 16 first leg. It is Ajax nil, Aston Villa nil. Back in the Europa League, Roma 2, Brighton nil is a half half-time score. Uh, and let's take you back to Prague then. Our commentary game, second half on the way. Sparta Prague nil, Liverpool three. It could be so different, Conor McNamara, but it isn't. No, it isn't. And, you know, at the end of the day, we, we, we huff and puff and we talk about this and that, but it's all about how many times you put the ball into the back of the net. And Liverpool have done that three times without reply in a first half in which Sparta created wonderful chances. Cuevin Gallagher, yes, he did make some very good saves, uh, but also they fluffed their lines, uh, the, the checks, and they'll be disappointed because um, they've given themselves, Pat, an enormous task now. They certainly have, and I have to say, watching Liverpool a lot this season, and they have, they have generally been a joy to watch and tonight there have been moments of brilliance from Liverpool most of it has to be said to the same man however I don't know many teams that have created that many opportunities against Liverpool and made them look so uncomfortable at the back people might say no Van Dijk there tonight but even so this has been an enjoyable game to watch and a lot of it's got to do with the fact that uh, Spr- Sparta Prague team have went out with a good attitude but quality has shown in the end particularly up front yeah the quality to create chances has been there from Sparta but not to finish them Uh, just before the third goal which did come deep into stoppages at the end of the first half just before that third goal 
Sparta had changed to go to a flat back four to maybe try and get more bodies into the midfield but in a city that has a lot of statues of horses I fear the horse might have bolted <laughs> here yeah it's funny enough that Sparta fans booed the referee they've generally been very positive all the way through the game but they booed the referee um, as he walked on there to be fair he's not a problem <laughs> it's definitely not their problem their own problem is of their own making uh, they have not scored the goals they should have scored they've not taken their chances and if they're going to get any chance to get back in this at all and make it a game they need to score early uh, Jurgen Klopp's making a substitution over half time Connor Bradley who's had a very big last seven eight weeks seven weeks ago he'd never played in the Premier League Connor Bradley uh, he comes on in place of Joe Gomez and here that is a like for like swap Bradley slotting in at right back for Liverpool 3-0 in front two goals from Darwin Nunes a penalty from Alexis McAllister no further changes over the break from Sparta who had brought on Matty Rinesh ahead of half time Kuta tries to control here under pressure from Endo big roar from the crowd they feel that they're Number nine was being fouled there. The referee from Spain waves play on. Sparta playing from left to right as we look down in the second half. Maroon shirts, white shorts, black socks. That's a good turn by Preciado. And he's played a good ball down the right hand side. Bermancevic into the penalty area. It's into the back of the net. I think it's an own goal. Connor Bradley with his first touch since coming on. He's tried to boot it into the crowd. It's as impressive a finish as Darwin Nunes. He's blasted it into his own top corner. Calamity for Connor Bradley. First touch, it's coming on. What a start to the second half for Sparta Prague. Sparta won Liverpool three. Yeah, they'll need to check it across heads. They always do there. Preciado was fantastic in the right wing back position. Plays that across down to the right hand side, but there's two players again at the back post there. And it, it was a tap in if he didn't go for it. So. He had to go and try and play it. He's come off his shin. He, he should actually clear his left foot. They will check it because very early in the move, in the right-hand side, right down on the on the line here, it must have been very, very tight for offside. I must admit, I thought it was when I first saw it. But, you know, 50, 60 yards later, the, the ball's in the net. But they have to go back and look at that. There's a lot of people that want that goal not to stand. Nobody more <laughs> than a certain young right back. Oh, poor old Connor Bradley. It's co off his shit bad. He's tried to boot it into the crowd. He has put it straight into the back of his own net. It's not been confirmed yet. Liverpool protesting it's, it's to the right referee. They are looking at it. It's right down on the halfway line. It's really far back. That's what they were checking. This goal, I think, stands. Liverpool about to restart, the referee wanted to double check there, it's been confirmed by the fourth official as well. So, the Sparta goal, the own goal by Conor Bradley, has reinvigorated a bit of life into this game, which might have been falling away in terms of jeopardy with Liverpool 3-0 in front. Suddenly, this old stadium is rocking once again. Here come Liverpool on the attack. Good interception, though, by Krejci. And they're away again. Kuta, what a wait on that pass. Bermancevic into the penalty area. Rolls it across. What a chance. Harassling. Denied by Creevy Kelleher. Made the angle tight. Spread his body wide. Very good save. But how many chances have Sparta Prague had in this game? To be honest, the defensive line looks a wee bit of a mess just now with Liverpool. There's no getting away with it. Time and time again, they're going wide. As we're speaking just now, I think it's Canati that's gone down and injured. And he just could not get back. He could not move there. Possibly pulled a calf muscle or something like that. So there's no way that he's going to carry on this game just now. So that's maybe why that defensive moment looked really bad. But time and time and time again during this game, Liverpool have looked really, really poor at the back. The pace that they've, they've shown that's been time again as well right hand side left hand side I think the change was made at half time for the full back not because they were resting I think Wilkin Club knew there was a problem so they brought young Bradley on um, even so there's still problems there and to me the way Kanati's gone down there that doesn't look to me like a player that's going to carry on this game well, certainly what Liverpool do not want tonight is injuries and Ibrahima Kanati is still sitting on the ground inside the penalty area 
The Sparta players are trying to suggest he should be moved off the pitch so the game can continue. I, th I think they're waiting to make sure they've got the player ready to come on in his place. Van Dijk's just getting his, his kept together just now. They don't want to be playing with 10 men for any point of time. That's why he's sitting there not moving. Well, for Jurgen Klopp, if your defence has looked a bit wobbly, no better man than Virgil van Dijk to bring on. So Liverpool's captain is stripped and ready to go. Karate will be departing and it might even be that Liverpool are making it a double change here so Bozlai is getting ready for his introduction too boos, cheers, whistles, Karate walking off the field the locals want him to depart a bit quicker and while Liverpool make this double change here let's get some team news from West Ham's game they're in Germany tonight in the Conference League to play Freiburg John Southall's got the team news, John Evening, Connor. Just the one change for West Ham from the side that beat Everton at the weekend. Lucas Fabianski starts in goal in place of Alphonse Areola. Freiburg named the same side that drew with Bayern Munich on Friday. Thanks very much. So Virgil van Dijk has come on in place of the injured Ibrahima Kanata. He did walk off the pitch, so Liverpool fans uh, can be hopeful that that isn't anything too serious for the Frenchman. And there won't be a hat-trick for Darwin Nunes tonight because the Uruguayan is hooked to allow the introduction of Sabozlai. When play gets back underway, it'll be a throw-in. Far side of the pitch from us for Sparta Prague after Haraslan failed to score the latest opportunity that they have created. But Bradley, who's come on at right back, Sabozlai into the midfield and Virgil van Dijk has come on too. Here comes the throw-in. Low trajectory, but plenty of pace on it. Bradley heads it back across his own goal and... Kelleher makes the save on this occasion. It's two touches now Bradley's had. He's, both of them have been towards his own goal. Yeah, he's nearly got two goals in a couple of minutes since he came on. We know what difference that's made now to this game. And of course, the thing to remember on top of that, look, those fans that are making all the noise that you can hear over the airwaves here, well, now Sparta are aiming towards them. And of course, it's like Liverpool playing into the cop. They'll feel as if it's given them a little bit of advantage. They've got that goal back. If they could get another one, and I know you can sometimes try and build a game up that hasn't got attention, this has actually still got a bit. We're live in the Czech capital this evening, five live at BBC Sounds and BBC Radio Merseyside as well. Sabotzlai has it just outside the penalty area, tried to flick it into the path of uh, Cody Gakpo. Sparta are able to clear the ball away. Sparta 1, Liverpool 3, back to Rome. Roma against Brighton, Alistair Bruce Ball. Five minutes gone in the second half. Roma 2, Brighton nil. Brighton hanging on a little bit here. Jason Steele in action again. Romelu Lukaku's header at the far post. Steele got across in time to keep it out of his goal. Ansu Fati on at half-time for Julio Enciso. Roma 2, Brighton nil. Interesting story brewing in the Europa League where Bayer Leverkusen haven't lost all season, but they are 2-0 down away at Carabag in the early stages of the second half. What about Ajax against Aston Villa? Charlie Slater. Ten minutes gone after the break here and it's still nil-nil. Villa more lively in the second half. Matty Cash on, Pau Torres off, albeit said Ajax have just gone up the other end and Emi Martinez had to make a smart save as the ball was rolled into his six-yard box. Still nil-nil. Liverpool wearing their change kit tonight in Prague. The white and green. Virgil van Dijk, who's lent a new authority to the defence now, having come on in place of the injured Kanate. Endo gives it on to Gakpo, and Liverpool are in motion into their opponent's half. The wind has picked up a cold, icy breeze in Prague this evening. Gakpo held up on the edge of the penalty area. Gives it to Connor Bradley, whose own goal has given just a little bit of renewed hope to Sparta Prague here. Bradley down to the corner flag. Oh, he's managed to smuggle it through to Elliott. Now Diaz! Liverpool get their fourth goal! And it's the Colombian Luis Diaz! who was able to shovel it home from about 10 yards out. Sparta concede again as Liverpool celebrate their fourth. Do you know what? It's a weird thing. Liverpool have come out there after losing that goal and they, they don't even need to look at their manager. They, they know that they're going to get told, lift the pace. They lifted it there. And it's almost as if, oh, they've got close again. We're going to do something about that. Well done, Conor Bradley down the right-hand side there. He's playing as a winger there. He wants to make up for the goal that he's given away. Gives it into Elliot. He finds Diaz. And yes, there's a little bit of deflection going in. But it was almost a training ground goal the way they walked out in there. It was. It takes a deflection off the defender, um, Vitik, which made it difficult for the goalkeeper, Vindal. But that will certainly be Luis Diaz's goal he scored in his last three Premier League home games in succession the Colombia he's got his third Europa League goal now of the campaign as Sparta come back 
tell on the other end, no matter how many goals they can see tonight, they keep coming back at Liverpool. Clever back heel, Preciado, then a low cross in front of the six-yard box by Pormacevic, but too many Liverpool defenders back there, and Jurgen Klopp's team are able to get it away. Sparta Prague 1, Liverpool 4, we've played nine minutes in the second half. Pat Nevin. Do you think Sparta Prague are the definition of a team who don't know when they're beaten? <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> they're 4-1 down, and they are not playing like a team that are 4-1 down. Of course, they, they don't lose many, do they? I mean, here domestically, in the Czech Republic, they, they haven't lost a, a game in any competition since, uh, since October. And, uh, and they, this will be an unusual feeling for them to have conceded four goals here, but they'll have known it was never going to be easy tonight against an illustrious opponent by, like Liverpool. What about this? A shot from the halfway line by Preciado, which Kelleher backpedalling has to stretch to tip over the crossbar. They really don't know they're beaten. They I mean, he really had to do everything there. He had to tip it over the crossbar. And that wasn't a lob, that was a real ping shot there, just going in under the crossbar there. I'm impressed with a lot of players in this game tonight that are playing for Sparta. However, maybe Preciado above them all, he's been very special. And had that gone in, that would have been arguably the best goal of the game. Carradine takes the corner from the right-hand side, Kelleher stays on his goal line, headed down by Connor Bradley, there's a push on the defender, and it is going to be a free kick to Liverpool and a chance to clear their lines from the back. Liverpool leading by four goals to one here. This is the first leg of this two-legged tie. Sparta will travel to Anfield next week. There's not a complaint down there because uh, Liverpool went down. I think it was Kwanza who went down and he said he got a little bit of a, you know, a, not a punch, but a little bit of a, a hand in the face and he'd gone down there. The referees just went, oh, tough, just get on with it. <laughs> this kind of team and players see that nobody bothers to roll about after that they realise oh it's one of them refs and then just got on with the game which is another reason why it's been a good spectacle Liverpool scoring four goals tonight they also scored four against Lask in the group stage back in November here's Preciado same position from where he shot a moment ago this time he tries to send a pass to Horaslin and it's slightly overjudged Horaslin doesn't control and Bradley allows it go to play, knowing it'll be a throw into Liverpool, right full back position for them. It's, you know, you're going to watch these games, and particularly in the Europa League, less so in the Champions League, and you see the odd player and you think, oh yes, I think he could do a job. Um, and there's no doubt, you look at Preciado, you think, yeah, <laughs> someone's got to take a look at him. He's very, very special, this right hand side here. And Sparta's attack breaks down on the edge of the penalty area and an energetic. Alexis McAllister comes up over the halfway line, rolls it to Luis Diaz, the latest of the Liverpool goal scorers. Uh, Benfica against Rangers is one of the eight o'clock kickoffs in Europe tonight. Gavin Wallace has got the team news of that one. On the, on the way, I believe. Benfica making four changes to the team that were dropped 5-0 away to Porto at the weekend. Otamendi and Angle Di Maria starting. Rangers with all sorts of selection issues with five, four out of five wingers unavailable. Two changes to the team that lost to Motherwell at the weekend as Tom Lawrence and Fabio Silva come in. And here's a stat or a fact for you, Connor. Benfica have never lost a Europa League tie in Lisbon. Like it. That, that is a fact rather than a stat, yes. And, uh, I'm glad that these standards have been held up on 5-5 <laughs> tonight. <laughs> if you weren't listening at the first half, we had our uh, fact, which is that uh, Gerald Quance's goal for Liverpool in the Europa League this season means that as a football club now, Liverpool have had a goal scorer whose surname starts with every letter of the alphabet. We did a bit of research over half-time to get the, the awkward ones, if you like. The, the X was Abel Xavier, Xavier, who scored for Liverpool. Ron Yates, a Y. Bolo Zend and Christian Ziga, Zeds who scored for Liverpool, they had gone through 25 of the 26 up until Gerald Kwanzaa, Liverpool with a Q goal scorer to complete the set. In a season that Liverpool are hoping to complete the set for Jurgen Klopp, he's won every competition he's been involved in as Liverpool head coach, apart from the Europa League. It was the first final he ever got to as Liverpool manager was the Europa League, beaten by Sevilla. It might be the last one he goes to as Liverpool head coach. If Liverpool can keep progressing, they're looking good to go through this stage. 4-1 up for the moment against a, a Sparta Prague team who just keep coming back no matter how they, many they concede. The impressive Preciado pushes it ahead of himself. Van Dijk's going to get there comfortably first. Preciado continues running, sprints in on Kelleher too. And Liverpool played through that press and bring it back up towards the halfway line once again. This is five live from the BBC. 
also live at BBC Radio Merseyside this evening and what has been a very good evening for the Merseysiders so far. Pat Nevin. There has been a very good evening, but it's, it's not been an easy one. I mean, what you did want is maybe get two or three goal lead. I mean, I said, we, said, we talked about that before the game and you can take it easy and take the foot off the gas. That's not that kind of game at all, but it has been an enjoyable one. And oddly enough, do you know, I think the players will be enjoying it too. Yeah, it's got that feeling, and although it is cold, it's it's still nice conditions here, it's bone dry in Pride this evening, and uh, very nice conditions to play football. It's given us a very entertaining game. Sparta Pride 1, Liverpool 4, the latest from the Roma-Brighton game now, with Alistair Bruce Ball in the Europa League. 58 minutes played, Roma still leading Brighton by two goals to nil. Brighton desperately need the next goal in this tie. Danny Welbeck's gone close again, played in by Simon Adingra. Great work from him and Welbeck just running out of room in the penalty area. Got underneath the shot, good chance. He put it over the bar, Roma 2, Brighton nil. Another you know, three upsetting scenes in, in Rome involving Brighton fans uh, last night. Have to say what we've seen here in Prague, everything has been very calm, very well behaved. Liverpool fans on the road just in uh, enjoying the trip and, uh, and being welcomed by uh, their Czech counterparts uh, and a game here that's been played in a good spirit too as Harvey Elliott has possession on the far side for Liverpool and rolls it back to Gerald Kwanzaa and that's what they're trying to do they're trying to find a position now where they can hold possession slow it down you know break when they want to control the game as much as they can um, and no matter, that might happen you know an hour into the game now I think Liverpool would expect you know, the opposition to tire a little bit as they put a huge amount into the game but uh, we're already not right now but there is a big big game happening at the weekend on Sunday and Jurgen Klopp his thoughts will be well into the consideration for what he should be doing and who should be rested between now and then Liverpool have possession Robertson at left back Sabozlai I mean, Liverpool fans are delighted to see back in the team again uh, he rolls it back to Virgil van Dijk he's taking it easy yes he <laughs> is it's a, a very casual swagger about Virgil van Dijk as he plays it forward. Now Day Diaz puts a bit of energy into it, tries to break into the penalty area. Vitik holds him up, puts the ball out of play, throw it to Liverpool down the left-hand side. But, you know, just looking at the, the names that are on the pitch now with Diaz, Sabozlai, McAllister, van Dijk, it just shows how serious Jurgen Klopp has taken this assignment tonight in Prague. Absolutely, because the, the expectation was two or three kids would have played, two of the, of the youngsters. There are some young players out there, to be fair. You know, Bradley and Elliot's played as well. He's not ancient by any manner of means, but we were maybe expecting one or two more by this point in time, but you're right. He would love A to win this game. He's taking this team, he's playing against seriously, but I think he would like the return leg to be played with Liverpool extraordinarily comfortable at the start. The yellow card has been shown to Ladislav Krejci. He is the Sparta captain. And a free kick for Liverpool, which McAllister takes quickly, trying to play it in in front of Luis Diaz. Good stretching. Uh, Bivitic to make the interception. And Sparta trying to play it out from deep at the back once again. Um, this is a, a risky business, though, against Liverpool. And here's a chance for Cody Kipo with a good save. Peter Vindal has made the save. And that was an opportunity for Liverpool to make it five. Yeah, I mean, a brilliant chance. You've got to see the keeper was out very, very quickly and made a good save. I mean, there have been a lot of opportunities for both sides just now. And uh, I mean, it's one of those games had that sort of made it 5 1. It just doesn't feel, it doesn't look like a 5 1, but it underlines the quality of Liverpool have got. When they get opportunities, they almost always get a shot on target at the end of it. Liverpool are so good at doing that, and I know it's been a much discussed. Uh, feature and so many teams do it now to try and play it out from the back and it's all about trying to create space in midfield but Liverpool are expert poachers of, of winning the ball off defenders who take even a fraction too long yeah and they know the ones who wanted to I mean this isn't new stuff I mean this has been decades old what it used to be is you make sure the player who you think's least capable on the ball has got the ball and then you press that's exactly what Liverpool are doing and they're very good at the thing they are particularly good at is the timing of it you get more chances now if you teeth play out from the back. Here's Robbie Elliott for Liverpool, 63 minutes on the clock. He's broke from the halfway line to the edge of the penalty area. Sabozlai in front of Luis Diaz, a little bit too firm. Had that pass been softer, the Colombian might have got a shot away. As it was, he had to go out too wide. He's hold on to possession, but Liverpool have got it with Endo now. Back in the middle of the midfield once again. Sparta 1, Liverpool 4 on 5 live. Getting a little bit leggy you now. Sparta just beginning to see it now. There's a tiredness, there's not the same zip about their marking at the back in that central area. 
and it just looks as if Liverpool could maybe start doing what they wanted to do before, which was controlling the game. Very noticeable that they have slowed the pace down since Virgil van Dijk's come on. He holds the ball more comfortable. He draws players towards him. You know, he's almost like a controlling player, but from the back. Good turn by Diaz. Good response, though, from the defender, Martin Vitek, and he slides to put the ball out of play. Liverpool are about to make a change. Sparta Prague are about to make a substitution, too. While all that happens, let's get the update on what's happening in Amsterdam. Ajax against Aston Villa. Here's Charlie Slater. Still nil-nil here, 67 minutes on the clock, but I think the Villa manager, Unai Emery, will be increasingly pleased. Very much in the time, made five changes, has just brought the likes of Bailey and McGinn on, and Emmy Martinez has only a couple of moments ago made the save of the match from Ajax's Kenneth Taylor, 10 yards out, hits it low and hard and somehow the giant Argentinian goalkeeper gets down low to his right-hand side, 0-0. Thanks very much, so Liverpool have made the change. Bobby Clark has come on for his European debut, made his first Premier League start for Liverpool at Forest on Saturday. He's come into the midfield in place of Alexis McAllister, and the home side have made a change to Quasim Lachi has come on in place of Harassland, who, oh, he'll be disappointed when he watches back the video of this game, because Harassland might have had at least two goals in the match, if, if not maybe even a hat-trick. I mean, had he brought his shooting boots, this would have been a different story tonight. And of course, he is a top scorer anyway, so if they wanted to fall in, anyone yeah. that's who you wanted it to fall to and uh, you'll have some of your stats there how many games had, has Bobby Clark now played for uh, Liverpool uh, so Bobby Clark has made five Premier League substitute appearances then the start at Forest last season I mean yeah we're talking about about ten and how many major trophies is the one <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah as a uh, dangerous cross comes in Van Dijk missed it and it came up in front of Robertson and now Preciado on the edge of the penalty area tries to send it back in. Robertson deflects it out for a corner. You know, they are not allowing their heads to drop spot to Prague. They keep trying to come back and get another goal to reduce the deficit here. They've got a corner on the right-hand side. Five live in Prague this evening. Sparta won Liverpool four. Yep, and uh, that man Salah warming up for the first time. Mo Salah, so that's good for Liverpool fans to see that. And... Uh, Probably the last thing that the Sparta fans want to see on the Sparta defenders, they really don't want to see that. So here comes the corner, played in by Karen in on the right-hand side, Van Dijk with a firm forehead at the front post, heads it out. Um, Rinesh was able to get a touch, here's Karen in once again, back to Lassie, who's come on, a former Olympiacos player, he used to play alongside Kostas Tsimikas at Olympiacos in the past, Kazim Lachi and uh, he's got it inside his own half and he plays a short ball to, to carry in and Mo Salah's upping the tempo of his shuttle sprints as he warms up on the sideline and the Egyptian might be coming on shortly goal in Rome, Alistair Bruce Ball Yes, Brighton's first knockout tie in European football is proving a very rough ride in the Stadio Olimpico. Roma 3, Brighton 0. Centre-back Gianluca Mancini's got the next goal. Deep crossing from the left and Mancini stretching just got enough on it to knock the ball past Jason Steele. Roma 3, Brighton 0. Thanks very much, Alistair. Well, Brighton have done great things in recent seasons. They deserve this first ever knockout tie in European football, but they are finding out the reality of the... The quality that you come up against and never an easy trip to the Stadio Olimpico. Difficult night for Brighton, three goals behind now and your famous players like likes of Dybala and Lukaku scoring against them tonight. Here in Prague, Sparta 1, Liverpool 4. Robertson rolls the ball into Virgil van Dijk. Salah still going up through his warm-up stretches routine. Hoping to get a bit of time on the grass here ahead of the huge match at Anfield on Sunday when Liverpool hosts Manchester City. Those two could be trailing Arsenal by the time that game starts on Sunday. Should Arsenal win against Brentford on Saturday? A game you can listen to on Five Live Sports Extra. Kelleher comes way outside his penalty area here, dressed all in orange. Griefing Kelleher, who's had to make some big saves tonight, but he made them. And uh, the one goal that Sparta have scored this evening, Kelleher could do nothing about it. An own goal by Connor Bradley. Unfortunately, his very first touch of the match having come on, he drilled it into his own net mistakenly. It's a, a, a real shame, though. I mean, in the end, he should be trying to clear that with his left foot. That's something that's coming on his left foot. And I know he's not left footed, but that's the reason why that sometimes happens. If you go with your wrong foot, you know, and put it across your body, it can bounce up in front of you and it hit his shin and went flying into the top corner. But, you know, he's young, learn the lesson. And to be fair, I don't think anyone would be particularly worried about it other than him for a few moments. He is a quality young player. 
Preciado on the halfway line for Sparta Prague. Tries to play it to Lachi. Good work by Endo and Elliott doubling up on him. Had to win back possession. Throw in taken. Lachi plays it forward, bounces up nicely. Nice height for Quibin Kelleher had to make the save. What's very noticeable is the game has changed in, in, in a number of ways, but the pace of it has changed since Ben Dykes come on. And he's just killed it a little bit, slowed it down, drawn players in. The knowledge that he has of running and killing games down makes a big difference. However, young Clark's giving the ball away. And this could be a problem for Liverpool as uh, Bielmanciewicz tries to turn to the edge of the penalty area. Too many opponents around him. Liverpool comfortably win back possession. This is Endo. Challenge from behind by uh, Solbakin. Solbakin was too rough there, barging into Wataro Endo free kick to Liverpool midway inside their own half. And again, Van I mean, it's amazing actually how one guy, I mean, what, what you just said was intriguing there, Pat, how, how one guy can come on and, and single handedly change the tempo of the game. The entire pace of the game because what they were doing, they were trying to go and close down the Liverpool centre backs before that. Well, they tried it twice with Van Dijk, then chucked it. Because <laughs> it's pointless, because he just passes the ball faster. 20 minutes to play, Gakpo into the penalty area. Harvey Elliott tries to tee up Luis Diaz, who's already on the score sheet this evening. Liverpool leading 4-1 in this uh, tea time game in Prague. Sparta win it back on the edge of their penalty area. Nice footwork there from Zeleni. But he can't run it all the way out, and the ball eventually goes out of play for a throw-in on the far side. Such a temptation corner, we'll keep on looking down at Jurgen Klopp, who's been very calm tonight, uh, very measured, real belief in his team, but he has not turned round and looked at Mo Salah once, and Salah's, he's just sprinting time and time again, in fact, he's sprinted so much he's chucked it and went and sat down again. We've had five goals in the game here in Prague, there's a fourth goal in Rome, Alistair Bruce Ball. It's another goal for the home team as well. Less than 70 minutes play. Brian Cristante has now made it Roma 4, Brighton 0. Brighton falling apart. Cross in from the byline on the left. They were queuing up to head it in. Jason Steele had no chance. Roma 4, Brighton 0. Thanks, Alistair. Here in Prague, Jurgen Klopp's team getting the job done and building up a healthy first leg lead in this Europa leg tie. Liverpool with big domestic commitments to come over the next few games as well. Jurgen Klopp will be very pleased to bring a lead of this manner back to Anfield for the second leg. 4-1 they lead at the moment. Sparta come in the attack here. Lachi's delivery in was a good one. Good leap by Quantz at the front post to get in front of him. And Jurgen Klopp and Virgil van Dijk down there makes it a big point of applauding Quanza and the defensive intervention he made there. But you notice that they're not getting behind the Liverpool defence anymore. Whereas they were going wide before. There was massive big gaps between the centre-backs and the goalkeeper. They were zipping it in there, causing all sorts of problems. Hasn't happened once yet since Van Dijk's come on. Positioning, knowing where the danger is, knowing where you to position yourself and getting the players around you to do the same. And it's, uh, he's, he's been very, very special since come on, Van Dijk. You can listen to the big fight tomorrow across uh, BBC Radio 5 Live and BBC Sounds. Anthony Joshua against Francis Nogano. Uh, all the build-up available on the Five Live boxing pod as well from uh, right now on BBC Sounds. You can follow that fight tomorrow via the BBC Sport website as well. But commentary here on Five Live. Next live uh, football coming up uh, on Saturday with Crystal Palace against Luton is our pick of the three o'clock games. Here comes Sparta into the penalty area again, but off balance as the shot came in and a comfortable save for Quivin Kelleher. Palace Luton at three o'clock on Saturday on Five Live. Arsenal Brentford and Sports Extra at tea time because we'll, have, uh, we'll be featuring the Six Nations Rugby. England against Ireland is uh, on the network on Saturday tea time. This is Gakpo jumping on the halfway line, challenged by Marcus Solbakin. Gakpo does well to get it on to Luis Diaz, who looked to be fouled there, and the referee is going to get the yellow card out. And that is a booking for Zeleni. And a free kick to Liverpool, 12, 14 yards outside the penalty area that they attack. Here's the moment that Mo Salah's been waiting for, his return, just in time to prove his fitness ahead of the arrival of Manchester City to Anfield on Sunday. Mo Salah is going to get, well, I guess by well, the time stoppages are added, at least 20 minutes here in Prague now to impress Pat Yeah, it's brilliant for him to get back in. It's brilliant for Liverpool. And, of course, the timing couldn't have been any better. You've got Manchester City coming up. You need your best players for that game. And just, just simply watching the way that he has sprinted all the way up and down there, it's a hamstring injury that he's had. He looks, he looks fine.
he is desperate to get back on. You, so looking forward to that. You, you mentioned it last night, Pat. We were doing a bit for the, the Five Life Football Daily Pod, and you said some players need a few games to ease back in. You said Mo Salah isn't one of those players. Why? Because you'll be number of things. You know, the, the small players. You know, it just seemed to be able to keep himself that fit and that sharper a little bit longer. You know, so it's, I never see many of the smaller players struggling that. But maybe more importantly than that, he knows how to manage games. He knows how to manage his fitness, and he will know that he won't just destroy himself for 20 minutes or whatever here. He will know when to push it, and uh, that's why he can do that. Uh, free kick is taken by Sabozla. He slipped as he struck it. That was unfortunate. He planted his left foot on the ground and it completely gave away for him. So it's a mess up of a free kick there from Sabozla. And this game stays Sparta 1, Liverpool 4. Uh, details from what's happening. Rome against Brighton. Alistair Bruce Ball. 18 minutes to play in this game. Roma 4, Brighton 0. So a very unhappy evening uh, for Brighton's players on the field. Fairly unhappy off the field as well, Connor. Let me just read a, a social media post uh, from the official Brighton and Hove uh, Albion outlet. Uh, we are aware of bottles, coins and lighters being thrown by home supporters into the away end. We've reported to UEFA and the Italian police and we have requested immediate action to be taken. This, of course, follows the... Uh, the attack on some Brighton fans in the city last night uh, as well, where a couple of Brighton fans were injured. So problems off the field and the Brighton team being well beaten on the field as well this evening. Roma 4, uh, Brighton 0. Well, thanks for that update, Alistair. And we, we hope that all Brighton fans uh, get home safe uh, from what has been a, a rather tumultuous uh, trip to Rome. Not just what's been happening on the field, but what's been happening off it as well. Right, the substitutions have, uh, have been made here. Mo Salah came on for Liverpool in place of Luis Diaz. A triple change uh, for the hosts. Uh, Indra Tutsi is on. He's replaced uh, Velko Belmanchevich, who, who might have had a couple of goals in this game. He missed chances too. Victor Olatunji has come on, Nigerian striker. He's taken the place of Jan uh, Kutsta, who was the number nine. And uh, Adam Karabek has come on as well. He's replaced Kan Kyrenin in the midfield these players getting a quarter of an hour now against illustrious opponents in the shape of Liverpool Mo Salah's on the ball into the penalty area brings it to the byline right hand side tried to clip it back and it's deflected out for a corner Salah making an impression for the very first time he's been involved since entering the fray the only surprise is he didn't lay on a play for somebody there but brilliantly got to the byline on his right foot there tried to clip it to the back post there actually wasn't a clear player that he could find in there but you can see him knows where to put himself, get himself in the right positions, gets to the byline, and they're ready driving the opposition back. Temperatures dipping in Prague as uh, evening becomes night time. Bobby Clark has possession for Liverpool, gives it to Sabosli on the right hand side. His cross in is deflended away by Olatunji. Sparta Prague are able to clear it all the way to the centre circle where Connor Bradley is there on his own. Sparta 1, Liverpool 4. Back to Ajax Villa, Charlie Slater. Now still nil nil, not been a classic this one. The Villa star Ollie Watkins is down, just been clattered in the air. Meanwhile, for Ajax, Tuba Akpom is on. He scored 29 goals for Middlesbrough last season in the championship. Villa at the moment, though, putting one foot in a quarter final because you backed them to overturn Ajax at Villa Park a week tonight. Nil nil. Thanks, Charlie. You'll have heard the uh, whistles and cheers in the background there. Olatunji tried to come on the counter attack, he wanted to flick the ball over the head of Kwanzaa and run around the other side it hit the sort of armpit area of Gerald Kwanzaa but it wasn't a handball but they were appealing for it and play continues and Bradley has it near the halfway line actually it was brilliant play by Kwanzaa because there's no doubt the striker has just come on there it's got some real pace there but he didn't find it managed to play the ball I don't actually think it hit his arm but I think it was his chest that hit they were complaining there was no chance they were going to get a free kick there FA Women's League Cup semi-final Manchester City against Chelsea Maz Faruqi at the Academy Stadium Early chance for the WSL top scorer, Khadija Shaw, going just wide of the left post, ahead of them, wide of the right post of the City striker after a cross from Hemp. It's been a good positive start, seven minutes played in this League Cup semi-final, though it's Manchester City nil, Chelsea nil. Mo Salah into the penalty area for Liverpool, plays a 1-2 at Sabozlai, tries to return it again, Endo will pick up the loose ball, Robertson now just outside the penalty area, left-hand side, curls it in, looking for Salah, falls for Sabozlai, onto his right boot, shoots straight at the goalkeeper, either side, and it would have been Liverpool's fifth goal of the night, but he put it straight at Peter Vindal. Yeah, but he didn't panic, did he? He was really calm in the ball, didn't lash it, knew that although there was two or three players in front of him, he wanted to make sure he could make half a yard, 
he made half a yard, got it on target, as you said, straight down the throat of the goalkeeper, manages to save it, but uh, once again, the ball on the right-hand side there, uh, Robert Isala, really comfortable looking, knows when to make the right passes, and once again, Liverpool fans can be happy, he looks back and looks good. That's 18 shots now that Liverpool have had in the game. Good night for Jurgen Klopp so far in Prague. Sparta have possession wide on the left. A stretch to try and control it by Lachi, but they've given it away. Here comes to Bonsly. Referee is going to bring it back for a foul. Foul on Ladislav Krejci, the Sparta captain. That's a free kick to the home side inside Liverpool's territory. A goal from Mas Faruqi at the FA Women's League Cup semi-final. Maz. Chelsea are ahead. It was Lauren James with the finish, but all the hard work and the build-up done by Myra Ramirez, the Colombian striker, pouncing on some loose play, some dawdling on the ball from City in their midfield area. And Chelsea take advantage. Manchester City nil, Chelsea won. Here's Mo Salah into the penalty area. Goalkeeper comes out well and smothers. Good save, Vindal. Salah looking for his first goal since returning from injury but the Danish keeper was able to spread himself well and make the save. Some drama in Amsterdam, Ajax Villa, Charlie Slater. Where Aston Villa are down to 10, Esri Konsa for a second yellow card. It was really clever play from Tuba Akpom from Ajax. He's linked arms with Konsa and gone to the ground as the last man and drags Konsa down on top of him. The Villa man furious. Villa down to 10, it's still 0-0 with around six and a half minutes left. Shot from distance from Indrit. Tutsi, but it's way over the top of Kelleher's goal. With 10 minutes of normal time to play here, Sparta, well, if nothing else, they want the pride of getting another goal against Liverpool here. Trailing as they do by four goals to one. I think they'd like one of those, their own players to score a goal yes. as well, which would kind of help it. It does seem harsh on them, but you know that's just the way football is. It is harsh on the quality of players, but you know, since Van Dijk's come on, they've not really been as dangerous. You know, they've, they've broken now and again. But that high tempo, that high energy, that ultra belief they had, not quite to the same level before them. Liverpool have controlled the game just the way that uh, Jurgen Klopp's wanted it, and he's standing down there. And if I don't think there's anyone more controlled in this pitch today or around here than Mr. Klopp himself. Very calm, isn't he? Yeah, I was at the press conference last night, and it struck me what good mood he was in. He was cracking jokes and he was beaming his smile, and you know, maybe that he knows. He's leaving at the end of the season has has brought a sort of calm relief to Jurgen Klopp. He can enjoy it now. It's maybe not as stressful, even though you know he's got high standards and he wants to win things. And of course, but but because he knows it's coming to an end, I get the impression he's enjoying it more. Yeah, you may as well if you know you've got a certain amount of time, you enjoy everything you can do, and certainly winning a trophy already adds to that as well. Here's Tutsi, who's actually looked good since coming on. Does a step over on the edge of the penalty area to get away from Kwanzaa. Then he gets it back again. Big, tall striker, number 11 on his back. Trying to keep it in play by the byline, which he succeeds in doing. But then he commits a foul on Sabozlai. And that's a free kick to Liverpool. And a bit of frustration, I think, from Tutsi there as much as anything. Uh, because he had given away possession, he then gave away the free kick. Yeah, I think he's a bit disappointed because he thought it was going out for a corner kick as well. I have to say, I agree with him. I thought he had. He's a bit unlucky there. But they've played it on again now. And, you know, the changes they've made, maybe not necessarily the same quality, you know, players holding the ball up, but they are showing a lot of endeavour up front. They've got a little bit more pace about it yet. And against teams of a lesser standard than Liverpool, they would look really impressive just now, but... They're scarcely making an impression on Van Dijk and now quite have beside him. Yeah, I've been very impressed with the Sparta fans. I mean, 4 1 down, 83rd minute now, no one's left. You can look around the stadium, no one's making their way towards the exits there. They've been so positive in their support of their team. Harvey Elliott comes in the attack down the left hand side at 4 Liverpool, gives it in field to Wendo. We'll get an update from Ajax in just a moment. Sabozlai here on the edge of the penalty area, and Cody Gakpo gives it out to Connor Bradley. Level with the edge of the penalty area that Liverpool attack down the right hand side. Salah, Gakpo, back to Mo Salah. Liverpool beginning to step down on the accelerator now. Elliott wanted to roll it into the Egyptians' path in the penalty area. Defender got a touch, but Bradley mean, uh, holds on to it to ensure that Liverpool remain on the attack. This is Robertson now. Liverpool making the pitch wide, stretching it one side to the other. Bobby Clark running along the edge of the penalty area. Cuts back at himself too. Vitek, the defender near him. Robertson 
crossing position on the left-hand side, gives it in low to the feet of Gakpo, <laughs> and Liverpool are forced back to Virgil van Dijk. So come with Charlie Slater watching Ajax against Aston Villa. Well, well, what we're lacking goals, we're making up for in red cards. No sooner had Aston Villa gone down to 10 men, Ajax are now down to 10 as well. Tristan Guya, the right fullback, also a second yellow. This one a rash challenge on Nicola Zaniolo. Both down to 10, still 0-0. Salah shoots and Salah scores! Mo Salah's goal for Liverpool makes it five on the night. And if there was any doubt in Liverpool fans' minds as to the condition of Mo Salah ahead of that huge Premier League game against Manchester City on Sunday, well, he's answered it there. Salah on the score sheet. Sparta won, Liverpool five. Not unlike you know, early on in the game when they're caught in the ball high up the fish. Elliot gets it, eventually plays it along to maybe a small slide there, but it comes to Mo Salah. There's actually two players around him, but if he's in the right-hand side at an angle of the goal, he's just expected to go in the back, the far corner, and he does. He passes it in there. He doesn't shoot it. He passes it in there. They're just waiting to clarify if there's any possibility of offside there. It looked actually OK to me, but Mo Salah coming back, the only surprise would have been if he didn't score. Yes. Liverpool's all-time top European scorer, Mo Salah gets his 46th for the club in European football. It's his 20th goal of this campaign for Liverpool in all competitions. The referee is just waiting it was for the quite tight. It was quite tight, the offside when the ball came to Salah himself, but I thought he was onside. Oh, hang on, on, hang on, hang on. Don't press print on the record books just yet that Mo Salah goal has been belatedly chalked off for offside they were ready to go they were all set up in the center circle but the referee comes back it's only 4-1 but at least Salah has shown the sharpness there to prove he's ready to go for Sunday yeah I mean he gets the ball in the box and he finishes it you know it doesn't count but it shows you he's sharp enough and he's got himself well the ball two or three times already and he just looks dangerous every time so as I said certain players don't lose much in the NFL. Well, clearly he's one of them. You know, not that Liverpool wouldn't have wanted as healthy a lead as possible to go into the second leg, but Sparta probably don't des deserve to lose this 5-1, do they? I mean, mm, well, certainly not in their first half performance. No, absolutely not. And although Liverpool are the better team and the fewer quality shows through, um, and Liverpool have, by the way, underlined it time and again. Liverpool have played very well tonight. I mean, a number of, I mean, I think Endo, we've not talked about him much, but he's quietly had been a, a really controlling presence in that midfield as well. So Liverpool have played well, but so have Sparta Prague. Yeah, that has been a dull moment. Entertaining night of European football in Prague. Liverpool fans are going to enjoy the evening in what is one of the, the famous nightlifes of Europe. And uh, they've got a very big 10 days to come with City and United to play in the Premier League and the... FA Cup respectively. Van Dijk tries to hit a long crossfield ball for Mo Salah, but it's too close to the goalkeeper. Vindal comes to the edge of his penalty area to grab it. So tonight, Brighton trailing by four goals to nil in Rome. Liverpool winning here by four goals to one in Prague. Kwanzaa wins a header. Just outside his own penalty area, Connor Bradley, who came on as a substitute at half time, gives it back to Kwanzaa, back to Keller. These young players who are gaining so much first-team experience this season. It makes a big difference when you play really good players. There was a moment about five minutes ago when Clark had the ball on the left-hand side. He goes inside and Robertson flew beyond him. He was there for the slipped-in ball. And Clark didn't play it. And I, I took a whole minute just watching because I knew eventually Robertson would say something. And he did. And uh, I suspect Clark will play that ball next time because he's left. Sparta have possession. It is uh, Tutsi trying to shrug off Endo. He's done well against Endo. Now he takes on Bradley. Bradley, with good composure, flicks the ball away from Indra Tutsi, but Liverpool don't hold on to possession. A bit of a cheer as Tutsi battles on to get it back for his team once again. This is Marcus Sol back in. Sparta want a goal to celebrate here. They know they're not going to win the match on the night, but their supporters want something to cheer. Vitek is in trouble here, but he's been fouled. Free kick to Sparta midway into Liverpool territory. Right-hand side of the pitch as they come forward. Two minutes of normal time to go. And it was just these lovely moments, you know, with the attacking players. Tucci, I mean, it was a real Zidane turn, wasn't it? Got a perfect Zinedine Zidane turn. And the quality of players playing, and it's 
And one of the things you would say about this team, you, you go back and watch. If you were in track for a variety of reasons, and I know there are a variety, one of them would should be actually be go along and watch Sparta Prague. It's a lovely atmosphere in here, and they're a very enjoyable team to watch. Free kick. Wide on the right-hand side, played in by Karabek, and it's not a good delivery, too close to Kelleher. Easily claimed by the Liverpool goalkeeper, Robertson's pass wasn't great for Elliot. Elliot's done well to hold on to possession there. A night that uh, Liverpool have been very professional away from home. We, we spoke right from the beginning, once the team sheets came out, this was a line-up for Jurgen Klopp to get the job done, and that is what we have done now, is uh, moving into the final minute of the 90 in Prague. Liverpool on their way surely towards another quarter-final It'll be the 28th European quarter-final that Liverpool Football Club have ever been involved in Robertson back to Van Dijk they were already be looking forward to you know the next leg which you would be a very strange individual to say that Liverpool are in any danger of going out of this competition here however I don't think it's going to be very easy for Sparta Prague because I suspect they're going to come to Liverpool and try and play as openly. It's a really dangerous thing to do at Anfield. And uh, considering they played very well tonight and they're 4-1 down, nearly 5-1, I think that might be a, an interesting game to see. But it could be a, quite a lot of goals and I think most of them could be for Liverpool. Liverpool hoping that this could become a very special season to sign off. Jurgen Klopp's tenure at the club in style. They've already got the League Cup. Four minutes of stoppage time to play here. Liverpool 4 1 up at the end of the first leg. Hoping that they've already got one step in that quarter final of this competition. The only trophy that Jurgen Klopp hasn't won. Every other competition he's played in with Liverpool, he has lifted the trophy except the Europa League. Clearance by Kretschi for Sparta Prague who keep plugging away, keep trying to ask questions. I mean, it'll be some highlights real of this game in terms of the number of chances Sparta have and, and only the Conor Bradley own goal to show for it. Yeah, no, particularly as I say in the first half, got themselves in a great possession, lots and lots of skill involved as well. Just noticeable the four extra minutes. To be fair, there's been a whole bunch of substitutions. There's been a look at the VAR quite a few times. There's been the injury to Konate as well. But no one complained about the four minutes, did they? <laughs> and certainly Jurgen Klopp will not be complaining about that. He would just like to get this game finished on the plane home and start the preparations immediately for the next big game. Robertson has possession for Liverpool. Plays a little one-two with Bobby Clark. Clark gets it back again. Now he turns and rolls it up to the feet of Sabuz like just outside the penalty area. Robertson on his right boot. Back to Clark, who's got a stretch. Vindal comes out and makes a save. And just about Sparta Brack are able to get it away. Liverpool looking dangerous there as they broke from the halfway line right into the six-yard box. Oh, great play from Clark, wasn't it? I mean, he kept on bursting forward. It was lung busting, but he kept on getting into the positions. One, twos all over the place, and he finally got in one and one with the goalkeeper. But he could never get it under control. The ball was just too far ahead of him. He did not do a thing wrong there. He was just unlucky the ball was a yard ahead of him. Tomorrow from 7pm you can listen to the Friday Football Social with Darren Fletcher, Nigel Rio Coker, Don Hutchison and Paul Robinson. Then at 9 o'clock tomorrow the start to the build-up to the Anthony Joshua, Francis Naganu fights their heavyweight uh, bout to the Kingdom Arena in Saudi Arabia. Full commentary of that on 5 Live and BBC Sounds tomorrow evening. On Saturday we've got Crystal Palace against Luton at 3 o'clock followed by England against Ireland in the Six Nations at quarter to five. You can listen to full commentary of Arsenal against Brentford from 5.30 on Sports Extra and Liverpool will be back in action on Sunday that mouth-watering game Liverpool against Pep Guardiola's Manchester City at Anfield is a 3.45 kickoff on Sunday you can listen to the game in full here on BBC Radio 5 Live we are well into stoppage time in Prague Sparta who will keep their heads high they know that they've given this a decent go against a very good opponent they'll be disappointed that they have not taken more of their chances that they created but it is all over in Amsterdam Ajax Aston Villa Charlie Slater finished goalless both sides finished with 10 men after late red cards for Konsa and Guya by no means a classic this but Unai Emery was able to make five changes and still come away with a draw thanks in part to a couple of big saves from Emmy Martinez Villa will fancy themselves at home a week tonight in the second leg this one though 0-0 it's a buzz like for Liverpool into the penalty area, wrong footing the goalkeeper to score, and that will be goal number.
number five right at the very end in the fourth minute of four minutes being added on for stoppages Dominic Sabozlai gets his sixth goal for Liverpool and it's a 5-1 lead now that Jurgen Klopp's team will bring to the second leg at Anfield yeah when they got themselves a three on two there you really expected them they could very least get a shot on target but uh, great run in players dragging defenders apart it meant he could go through the centre himself Sabozlai keeps the ball low doesn't take a deflection keeper gets a foot on it cannot stop it felt a wee bit sorry for the player who made the mistake in the build up it was that man Preciado who I think had just been announced as the local man of the match and he blew it seconds later I think he was probably thinking of the trophy he was going to win and it's led to 5-1 and it's a dream scenario for Liverpool Football Club tonight there is the final whistle so a penalty from Alexis McAllister two quite brilliant goals from Darwin Nunes in the second half a goal from Luis Diaz and then right at the end Sir Bosley on this road to Dublin where the Europa League final will be held Liverpool appear to be in very fine fettle Jurgen Klopp has got some of his more senior players back involved too all is rosy for Liverpool in this Jurgen Klopp's final campaign in charge of the club how far they will get in pursuit of this quadruple we don't know but this feels a very important step in terms of the Europa League leg of any potential quadruple because surely Liverpool are going through to the quarter-final winning here 5-1 Pat Nevin uh, winning in a better style enjoying it being able to take the foot off the gas the last 15, 20, 25 minutes that helps as well scoring goals adds to your confidence getting Salah back that adds to everyone's confidence as well against not a bad team against what I thought was a really decent team um, who've kept on going as long as they possibly could created lots of chances themselves so lots of positive to be taken out of it before the game however we were chatting and we said in a perfect world Liverpool would have two or three goal cushion I'll be honest with you I didn't think they were going to get it they've got that and more that smile and that Jurgen Klopp face is going to be all over the place tomorrow morning and on newspapers on the television screens. Yep, the only potential worry was that Kanate went off injured. He did walk off the pitch, so Liverpool will hope that's not anything too serious. But otherwise, it's been an evening of positives. Salah is back performing, had a goal disallowed. Sabozlai with his first goal since returning from injury. Liverpool scoring five in total. Darwin Nunes in the form of his life. Things are going well for Liverpool. They've won here by five goals to one. Yeah, Pat Nevin, if uh, if Jurgen Klopp could have written this tonight, it would have read something like that, I think. Uh, dream scenario. Possibly the only thing, as we say, they mentioned a little injury to Canati, a possibility. But, you know, Salah not getting the goal in the end. But that is so nitpicky, because you're right. It's nailed on what he wanted. You know, a good energetic game against a decent team that have played a skillful open game wasn't dirty wasn't tackles getting hammered in he's not getting lots of yellow cards all the little fears you would have for an away game in Europe I actually think the players enjoyed this game tonight because it was so open and they were given opportunities to show his skills and then on top of that Nunes scoring two absolute crackers now if you haven't seen them get to see the first one in particular it is a blast from outside the area that spot all over the place so oh no great day. and by the way they've enjoyed their atmosphere we're talking you hear that in the background mm. tonight to our right hand side here the the Sparta fans they've not moved they have not budged they're still here they're still celebrating the wrong word they're just they're still saying to their players we know you made the effort we know you played well you lost 5-1 at home and we don't we're not used to losing losing but we still respect you we still back you that is absolutely brilliant to see how many teams do, do that it's pride well it? it's, it's just pr they're yeah. proud of their team they're, they're proud to be hosting Liverpool here they know that the scoreline maybe doesn't fully reflect the performance they put in and, and Sparta remember did come back from a first leg deficit against Galatasaray but they weren't 5-1 down um, you know I think their fans have been brilliant tonight the, the other thing on, on Nunes, Pat, is that he still has sort of had this kind of inconsistency thing following him around. That's got to be put to bed now, hasn't it? I mean, it's not just tonight. It's been the last few weeks. We're seeing his quality week in, week out now, not just some of the time. Yeah, I mean, someone who would maybe be extremely picky might say, well, a few more tappings would help, right? Yeah. Maybe so, maybe so. But no, Connor said a really interesting thing. It was really good 
Someone was suggesting to him that uh, there's always chaos when he's around. Do you know what? Chaos is a good thing. Connell did say that to me earlier on. And it, he d develops chaos all around him. And then when there's not chaos, he's in a position where both of his goals go tonight. I didn't think there was a chance. I really, I just thought, you're not going to shoot there. The second one in a technical point of view, if you get a chance to watch it, go and look at it and look at his face. Don't look at the ball, look at his face. At no point does he look at the look at the goal when he's running away from the goal at a strange angle and smacks into the far corner. Do you know that old phrase, he knows where the goal is? Mm. He seriously knows where the goal is. By the way, there's a lovely sight in front of us just now, which I'm semi-tempted to ask Connor to describe just now because he's better at that sort of thing, but it, it's actually lovely, isn't it? It's, it's really nice. They've been jumping up and down in unison. It's kind of like the Liverpool Poznan, but doing it facing the pitch. And the players all linked arms and did it. This is the Sparta team who've just lost by five goals to one. But, but this, this is a lovely, warm feeling about how they've reacted to this and the bond between the players and the fans. Chaos is a ladder, as uh, somebody once said, and Liverpool are looking to climb it all the way to Dublin. Uh, thank you very much, Pat, Connor. What a result that is for Liverpool. But in Rome...